Hey, Gavox here. So, the podcast is back. Muttman episode 180. Rayweather, you were a... Uh, oh, Rayweather's a guest. Today. Eric Rayweather. Great YouTuber. I guess you should introduce him for those audio-only listeners. Um, uh, You were a frequent guest on the podcast way back in the day. How you been? What have you been up to the last three years? I've been up to the same stuff I was three years ago, just making YouTube videos, essentially. Uh, but I got a house now, so, I mean, some things have changed wow. a little bit. In, in in Nolens, uh, I don't live That's like I say, right? I, no, I don't live. I don't live in the city. I live outside the city. It's too expensive to live in the city, honestly. And mm. I mean, and and the crimes not it's been pretty bad lately too. So I, I wouldn't even want to live in the city. But no, I live like 15, 20 minutes away. Wait, how is it? Ex wait, that's like two opposite things. It's expensive, yet there's a ton of crime. Yeah, I know. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but no, here we are. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna ask too much more about that. Uh, to can't start, can't hear. What? We should, you should be able to hear. Sorry, people say they can't hear. But, all right, Ray brother, we got a lot of topics today. We got EA airs, too numerous to count. Is this, wait, what is the best Madden ever? Um, does Madden need refs above all else? Um, what do you prefer, you know, the, what parts of the uh, significant other do you prefer the best? But is it really just speed? CFM issues, NCAA, Man Blitz, Meta. Talk a little bit about uh, the the NFL going on right now. 2K's menu innovation killing Madden. Um, the September blues of YouTube. And about like a six other topics. What Madden needs to fix. But let's, uh, I don't know. What's what's a good way of intro? What's what's the best thing of that of that list? What do you think is the best? Should we talk about um, what Madden needs to fix right away? Sure. That's always, that's always a, a relevant topic with this game. I like it. I like it. What, um, what is your number one issue? What did, wait, say that one more time. What's your number one issue with this game right now? Number one issue. I mean, I feel like the obvious answer is the old line just sucks. But, I mean, I can get around it sometimes. I mean, sometimes you just can't get around it. Sometimes there's literally nothing you can do. But I feel like even since the beta, that was just, like, the biggest issue with the game. And it, you know, it carried over to the real game like it normally does. You know, whatever the yeah. biggest issue in the beta is almost always is one of the biggest issues when the game drops because it doesn't really change much that i mean to me that's the biggest issue because and it's not just the blitzes i don't mind the blitz I, I like blitz heavy metas personally but it's just the the times where they just let people walk right in and you know just or they just like stare at a guy and don't even attempt to do anything half back or just stare at a guy like you know stuff like that so i guess just blocking as a whole i feel like they improved I think was the gameplay in, in you know some other areas but that's just the O-line so bad that it kind of takes away from it a little bit. Dude, I think that was the funniest thing in the entire preseason, like, uh, reveal. When they, the, the, the first gameplay came out, where they showed a replay of, like, a blitz coming through the A-gap. The center stare at the guy, and it was, like, all pro Corey Lindsley. Like, one of the best in the game, so not even, like, the EA Sims could be like, oh, that's a bad center. It's, like, the best center in, like, the NFL, one of the top three. And he's just, like, watch, like, Edmonds get to the uh, the A-gap. Oh, sorry, we got to, I got to turn off notifications. <laughs> yeah, I think that, like, that's, like, one of those, yeah, like, on. that's one of those moments where you realize, like, in some areas how, like, disconnected they can be because, like, they were showing that as if it was a good thing. Like, oh, this is a feature. You can avoid the the, the offensive line with this new whatever mechanic. And it was like, no, nah, the dude just ran right by him. Like, I can't believe that yeah. the – it's not like they left it in there by accident. That's what was crazy. Because sometimes they do just leave, like, weird things in the videos by accident that maybe they just didn't catch. But that was, like, purposely, like, they, they spoke on it. Like, oh, this is this is a good thing. That was just insane. Yeah, it was it was great. Because, like, uh, you and I had conversations during the, the beta about the O-line, like you mentioned, and stuff. And, like, and it's so it is funny, like, the people that sometimes capture those things or do the replayers and makes the videos... Like, that's the marketing department, right? And the marketing department shared between, like, you know, NFL, freaking FIFA, like, all of EA Sports titles, right? So they don't understand what the hell's even going on and what's good and what's bad to show, right? They just show exciting plays. Yeah, I think that's why, too, like, the, the trailers always look bad because, I, I mean, I don't know this for a fact. It's just always an assumption I've had by watching, but it's, like, the defense always looks way worse in the trailer than it might look in the game. Like, we played the beta, and even still, they, they definitely tweaked some stuff from the beta because I feel like zones were even better in the beta. But you see the trailer, and you're like, well, this wasn't like what we played. Like, it was a lot harder to pass, but in the trailer, it's like everything's wide open. But I think 
from my knowledge, the people that, like like they have like a capture team that capture these clips. So they're not like, you know, they actually have like people over there like Mole or uh, they got Mo now. You know, people that like can play the game on somewhat of a competitive level or have. But those ain't the people they get to capture stuff. Like people that are good at the game, they have just a capture team. And I'm just assuming that these people just are awful at the game. So they just put the difficulty low, and they're like, all right, well, we've got to show off the passing system, so let's put the difficulty low and let's throw a pass. And the guy's just wide open where you didn't even need to use the passing system to throw it. Like, stuff like that. Because I, cause I needed to get some clips for him because I did, like, an actual, like, sponsored video for him, which, you know, I've only done maybe a handful of those over the years. But I did one this Shout year. Out. And they're like, you know, we'll get you some extra, like, clips for the video so you can show, like, the passing and stuff. And I was, like, telling them what I needed – like, all right, we're going to try to get that. Um, you know, we'll see if, they, if they're able to get it. I'm like, why don't you just have Mole do it? Like, Mole knows how to use the passing system better than anybody. He's been using it for months or whatever. And they're like, ah, well, it just doesn't work that way. And it's just one of those, I guess, bureaucracy things. Like, ah, it doesn't work that way. We can't let him do it. Like, why? Like, he's going to show it off better <laughs> than the people you're going to get to record it. And that's what you want. You want to show off good footage. It's like, it doesn't make sense. I don't know. It's like, a, it's like a union job, right? It's like, well, uh, the union uh, allows the footage recorders only to record the footage, whereas the gameplay guy cannot record the gameplay. It's like, yeah. so, like it's, it's, such a, it's such a weird, like, you know, restriction of rules around, like, who does what. But, like, that is absolutely how, like, bureaucracies work because nobody wants to, like, lose their job because their job is so redundant to capturing film for a, a highlight stuff. Otherwise, by the way, like, the chat outs here, uh, like, like, sorry, like, uh, like, you know, we're making fun. Sorry, what was it? Stop Fox. Uh, Dad's working. Stop, guys. He'll scold us all when we're done. No, I thought the troll was funny. Nice work, Embry. I just, I didn't realize it was on. Usually I turn those off. But, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. It, 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 it like, the, the upside of that is that it shows off the things that are wrong with the game, like, immediately, right? And so, like, we know what to look for. And also, like, with beta offense and stuff being tough, Yes, but, like, nowadays we know how the game works a little bit more. We know, like, streak and corner out is basically undefendable because zones don't drop there quick enough or get to their spot because it's so brutally bad out there. So you got to basically, like, put a guy at the right zone drop right where you need him because the locomotion from, like, flat zones is so bad to the corner, which is something we didn't really know during the beta how exploitable that is. So, like, yeah, there's a few things. Like, it feels like defense is always maybe stiffer right away, except for 22. We knew that we knew that was a disaster um, going into the game. So, yeah, I mean, like, number one thing, obviously, is we need refs on the field, first of all. Then they can take a look at getting the offensive line mechanics, right? Like, is it, isn't it it still, like, according to the beta feedback? I don't have the refs on the field, baby. Oh, it, can't, yeah. it can't be a simulation game without the refs. No. That's what, Do you they, feel like... that's what they tell me. At least. Yeah. Do you feel like your audience is is oh absolutely more casual and simulation based? Uh, my audience is is a is a hundred percent uh pro. Get the refs back on the field. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, hey, like, everybody wants different things. Like, I don't try to like knock people, but it's just to me, I'm like, there's just so many more pressing things that matter. Like, cause I, the way I always look at the game is it, it's kind of like the Pro Bowl years ago. Remember when that was the big thing? Everybody wanted the Pro Bowl back. Put the Pro Bowl back. This was ridiculous. And then the Pro Bowl came back and. Like, they were like, oh, well, franchise still sucks. And it's like, well, yeah, like, the Pro Bowl is not going to make a bad franchise mode good. So, like, instead of complaining about that, like, complain about some of the bigger things that make the mode replayable. Because, like, yeah, refs should be in the game, I mean, obviously, but that's not going to make you come back to the game and play it. If the game's bad, you're not going to come back because there's refs on the field. So, like, for me, I'd rather complain about the stuff that actually is going to bring me back to the game or make the game more enjoyable. And then... Once all that stuff's ironed out, then you can complain about the little stuff that, you know, is just visual. That's how I've always looked at it. Because yeah. if the game's not fun, the refs ain't changing that for me. You know what I mean? I 100% agree. Like, you can put, like, a million refs on the field. If the game sucks, I don't care. Like, and, like, and that's that. That's it, right? The game needs to be good and fun and, and well-balanced. And, like, everything else is kind of just set dressing towards it. And it's, it's, it's a lot of the same issue that I find myself when I see, like, random errors that like online like somebody gets like the, the craziest shit happened to them i just laugh like the only problems i think in the game that like need to be solved asap are the ones that are affecting us like every single game uh like i said like some like you know exploitive shit um like o-line logic corner routes being like you know zone drops or sorry just zones not being locomotive enough they just shuffle out there instead of sprint like that kind of stuff is what we need fixed first and then they can kind of look at like all that funny stuff because like I actually, like, I don't know. I think that's kind of funny for the game. If, like, 
you know, the ball bounces, like, randomly, then all of a sudden it hits, like, a scoreboard. There's a goddamn house on the field or some shit. Like, cheerleaders all of a sudden get out there and play as your offensive line. I don't know. Like, random shit, like, you know, that's kind of funny. But, like, then, the, like, the more serious stuff that we see more often is, is definitely things we need fixed, right? The, yeah, the pause, freeze, halftime glitch shit, that really needs uh, to be fixed before anything else. And, like, you're right. It's the fundamentals of the game that matter the most. And then you can kind of put the set dressing onto it, even though people love the dressing. Like, right? Like, 2K, like, people were in my mentions on 2K, and I just, like, retweeted it a little bit ago, like, saying... 2K is so innovative because when you make certain player builds, it shows that you're kind of like Kobe or like you're kind of like, you know, LeBron or whatever, whatever, like certain player back in the day. And I'm like, so we basically just have like, you know, uh, uh, like 2K people are super hyped because they put like a picture up, right? Like, oh, your build kind of looks like what uh, Hakeem Olajuwon was if, if you made him specifically. And it's like, I don't know. It just feels like fluff. The actual game, like, I just don't enjoy playing 2K on the court. But you know what the, I, like, what, do you, what do you feel? Like, the truth to a lot of that is, though, is, like, anybody that plays 2K isn't really that excited about the thing you just said because those builds suck. And so, like, it doesn't mean anything if the builds suck. Like, to, to how the game plays. Like, maybe the builds shouldn't suck, but they do yeah. because the game plays a certain way. But, like, the people that get excited about that half the time is, like, probably people that's not even playing the game. They're just like, oh, look what they did versus what – madden didn't do but the people that are playing would tell you like this isn't like there's really not any substance to this it's not that usable sure it's a cool little like easter egg but it's not really again it's another one of those things that's not going to make you replay the game now some of the other stuff they did was cool like the uh the errors in in their franchise mode like that is pretty crazy like i mean even the, the jordan challenge like stuff like that's cool i don't know why ea doesn't do stuff like that like why Can not you explain have a, that a little bit what the jordan challenge yeah so it's the, just well, like, by, by the sorry, but first the eras. I know what you're talking about, but like explain about us. Yeah, do the Jordan challenge, then the eras. Okay, so the Jordan challenge is like it's kind of like documentary style where you just play through moments of his career. So like you know, it's some of the famous games like the flu game and stuff like that. Uh, you know, the last shot of his sixth ring. You know, the how he won his first ring. You know, it's just a documentary of like a bunch of different moments that you played through, and they present it even to make it look how it looked back in the day. And it's just like a cool little playthrough for like a fan. But you could do that in Madden. You could do that for Tom Brady or like Aaron Rodgers or somebody or even just a legend. You could bring back Joe Montana, you know, whoever. Like they could do that too. That would be cool. So then they got the errors in their franchise mode, which you can basically start your franchise on, mode hey, in a, in be, a number before, of... Be, okay, before we get to the errors... Quick. Yeah, before we get to the errors. Sorry, I want to talk about the Jordan Challenge. Yeah, yeah. Um, isn't that just Mutt solos, like, where we have it in different, like, moments and stuff through the season? Isn't that just, like, MLB The Show did that last year and people hated it, especially, like, when they had, like, the sepia tones and stuff. Like, bo both games do that, though, right? And I, like, Madden did that, you know, like, even going back to franchise mode, 15 years ago, we had moments in, in, in certain eras and stuff. And, and, but you know, that's back then when they had legend teams and whatnot before they got sued into oblivion and they had to take that out of the game. Um... Is is that something that we already have in these games? I think it's it's just the way that 2K presents it. Like solos oh, okay. feel like a chore. You know, like no one really wants to play them. You're just doing it to achieve whatever you're trying to achieve. The Jordan Challenge is something that is just a standalone. Like you, if you're into that kind of thing, you would want to play it because it's it, it's just presented in such a way that it makes it more fun to play. I don't know. I mean, I guess you're not completely off base, but it's just presented completely differently. Whereas, like, a solo challenge, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a chore. It's not something that any of us truly usually want to do. Ch it's a little bit different. Chat's but... saying it's like, it's like you're playing a documentary? Yeah. Essentially. Like I can that, see it, that. It's presented like a documentary. And you okay. play certain moments of it, and you try to, like, replicate them. You're trying to replicate the moments as best as you can. So it might be like, okay. and I haven't played this year. So I haven't had time to yet. But I think, you know, there might be a part where, like, you're playing – as him in college, you're trying to win the championship, so you got to win the game or something. Or there's another game where maybe you got to score his 63 points. I think there's something like that. So it's like it is a little bit of a challenge, but I don't know. I think it's just cool. Like it's something cool. Yeah, like, this is. I it, think it's cool. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Are you Go good? Ahead. Okay, it kind of feels like um, I've had this idea for years for Face of the Franchise. You know, Face of the Franchise got that one story mode. You know, 2K's got their story mode and everything too. But I thought like, dude, Madden needed to have some fucking balls. You know what I mean? Like, what they needed to do was shift over, and now I'm dropping frames, of course, because I'm a trash streamer, but uh, Madden needed to have some balls, right? They needed to make, like, the Rocky Blyer story. Like, I want to go from, like, 
like fighting the Vietnamese back in the day, getting your leg blown off and trying to make it back in the NFL. That should have been face of the franchise. They could have done Alejandro Villa in a way, but they could have had like they could have mixed over like Battlefield, right, with that release because he was a Marine. Uh, wait, was it a Marine? I don't know. He was one of the he was a Special Forces guy, and. And then he got over and played in the NFL, right? And now I understand being like a tackle isn't as fun, but being a running back would have been kind of cool, like if they did shit like that. But like Madden's got no balls. It's the same shit every year. This year it's like, oh my god, but wait, it's after your first contract now. It's so different. Like they need to do it. Like they need to do like a Law and Order SVU, rip it from the fucking headlines to do like that. Like, I said that the, the, the MJ idea is kind of cool playing through because like how popular that last dance was and everything. Like that would have been kind of badass. Yeah, I think too. Like some of it. Some of it's for sure the NFL. So a lot of it's EA as well, though. But the NFL is very, I don't know, from the, from the little I know, just from being around this stuff for the last few years, the NFL is, like, extremely picky and very uptight about stuff. And I think the NBA is a lot more laid back. I think yeah. that's why you – I'm not I'm not saying that's the whole reason because some of it definitely is on EA for sure. But I think that – I think it's a little bit easier, at least that's what I've always been led to believe, is that it's, it's a little bit easier, like, dealing with the NBA – it's a little more laid back. The NFL is extreme, extremely uptight, which is isn't really hard to believe because they're like that just in their own, you know, outside of Madden. Like take Madden out of it, they're uptight in the actual NFL. The way they find players for the dumbest things, they can't wear what? certain color stuff, and yeah, you know, it's like they're just they're very uptight about stuff, and that, and that carries over into the game because there's certain things people want in the game that the NFL just won't allow to be in the game, like simple stuff that doesn't even matter that much. So. You go to like a face of the franchise story and you're trying to make it like you say have some balls it's like would the nfl even allow it like probably not which is unfortunate so that like always like is going to hold stuff back to some degree but even with that said i mean face of the franchise even as like a generic thing could be way better than it is it's just it's, it's never been even close to good so yeah no i uh, uh i do Superstar agree i have and, you know i have first experience like with the nfl being a little uptight so a few years ago, I was I was broadcasting NFL games here on Twitch, and it was like the first year they were doing it or something, or maybe the second year, I don't remember. It was one of the first years, and they asked me, like, huh, the NFL approved of my channel. And they're like, yeah. I was like, I actually asked the guy at Twitch, like, they approved my channel? He's like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. And so it was the year of the, the you know, the helmet bashing by Miles Garrett. And let's just say we, we got a little crazy on stream at the end of the game there because we were broadcasting it. And they never asked me back for some reason. When I said, like, if you can't win the game, you might as well win the fight. And I was, I was like, uh, I don't know. I, I don't even know what I said. Sadly, they, you don't, they don't allow you to save past broadcasts from those things for copyright reasons. But, yeah, they never asked me back after, after jumping up and down during a fight and yelling him to, like, I don't know, rip his head off or something. I don't even know what I said. But, yeah, NFL, totally uptight. Where they let, like, guys like Nick Merckx do it, whoever that is. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, the NFL is, they're very, I mean, I'm trying to think of even just a better way to explain it, but uptight's really just the best way to put it. They're, yeah. they're, they really care about the image a lot, which is funny because people are like, well, why don't they care that Madden has all these bugs and glitches and gets bad user scores? But I, I think, too, like, some of it's a money thing, too. Like, if the money's rolling in, they don't care, too. So, but yeah. They they care more about like the image of like their actual product is not as much the game, but they're not gonna allow certain things to be in the game. Like yeah, it don't matter at all. But to them somehow it matters because like if it goes against what they do in the NFL, like if there's a rule against oh you can't wear like certain colored cleats or this or that, they're not gonna let you do it in the game because it goes against the rules they have set in place and they want it to match. So that's why they do things like the yard and stuff like that. Like all right, well, we could do it here because this isn't like technically a part of like the the game game you know like the real teams and stuff but mm -hmm. it's all a bunch of bs yeah it is um all right so what madden 23 we've had quite a few airs do you think this madden has more or fewer about the same as other maddens previously um hard to say i've been kind of tapped out the last week uh I mean, cause Mutt, the main, really the main thing with Mutt's just been the comp pass, right? I mean, has, has there been other stuff? That's the one that I know about. And then, I mean, the game just has bugs as normal, like the offline modes. I feel like franchise the last few years has had quite a few bugs. So is face of the franchise. So is the game. I feel like the gameplay itself has less bugs, if anything else. But outside of that, I don't know if it's been much different. I would agree with that. Outside of like we talked about earlier with. Um... 
So the O-line issues, and obviously there's some more issues that we don't really need to get into muck too much about that. But yeah, I think Mutt's been about normal. We always get so many errors in Mutt. They're so bad at a live service. It's so weird, like, I don't understand why they don't have like better processes by now. They've been doing this Mutt shit for over a decade. How have they not instituted stuff to like better check when things go live or they don't pay QA? I don't know. What's going on? And I wish I knew. I don't think anybody knows because it's, I mean, some of the stuff, like you say, even like from a gameplay standpoint, like not necessarily even just mud, but gameplay, it's like, all right, we fixed the loot blitz. And then it's like, but the loot blitz ain't really fixed. So it's like you fixed it. You had, you had to test it, right? You had to test to make sure that it wasn't working. And if you did that, you would see that, oh, it is still like kind of consistent. It might, might not be as good as it was, but it's still pretty good. So like what's, what gives? Is it just like, oh, well, this is the best we could do, so let's push it out and say it's fixed? I don't know. Now, with Mutt, I don't know. Maybe they don't keep test. I, it, it's hard to say. Like, I, I'm, I'm Obviously, they test because I know people there that test, but I guess it's just it, it's probably like a few people. It's not, not many people. And as soon as all of us have something, whether it's a new promo that comes out or just the game comes out as a whole, millions of us own it. Like, we're going to see it instantly. And I think that's just what it is. Um, in terms of, like, gameplay testing, I mean, I feel like they – some of the stuff that gets through every year just is is baffling. So I don't know. I I, I don't know how much they are testing, but it's, it, at, at times it just seems like they're not at all. Because how did this get through when we could find it like in an instant? Like it's the first thing that comes to our mind to check, <laughs> and they didn't check it, and that's their job to check it. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It is it is kind of weird. Uh, like yeah, and I think like there's probably a lot of turnover at EA too since they I don't know they just need to invest more in their 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 personnel. I feel like over there, and it's it's like how the uh, you're you're tied into CFM pretty well, right? How are the errors over on that portion of it? I heard there's there's quite a few between like the 32 user issue. That's been a thing for years. Free agent resetting, depth charts resetting of transactions. Uh, user joined then immediately booted and uh, glitches out the whole league. So like, what's going on with franchise? Hold on, give me give me one second, cause this dude's like right outside my window with a freaking leaf blower. I'm trying to wait for him to pass. <laughs> it's just horrible timing. Um, I think he might have passed a little bit. All right. Um, yeah, no, CFM seems like they got, I know it's hard to keep up because like, I'm, I'm so busy making videos. I just go off of like what I see in the comments. Sometimes there's, I know there was a trading issue. I think they fixed that, but there's like every day I'll see something like, Oh, such and such is kicking me out of the league or it's, or it's locking people out of the league. But I, it, it's always a different number of things. It's never like one consistent thing. So it sounds like there's just a bunch of little bugs that are constantly either disconnecting leagues, not allowing people to advance, or just completely bricking the entire league over and over. It's not like I, I don't ever see just one particular thing, which le which just sounds like mm. the whole thing is a mess when, when it comes down to that. Um, yeah. I did see another one people have said, like, I, I don't know if this is CFM only. I think it might be where they're trying to change their QB's throwing motion and, like, it doesn't save, so, like, you can't change the throwing motion. So if your QB has Weird. one of the terrible releases, you can't change it. I have seen that. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems like it's a it's a bunch of little things that just add up to make the whole thing not a fun experience. I mean, like, which is strange because I like, you know, overall, I think we've seen a big improvement over the last couple years in CFM. Like, it's it's I think it's better, even though I feel like the scouting is worse. Even though they said they overhauled it, they actually made it worse, in my opinion. Um, it just, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's It seems like, you know, two step forward, one back, and then maybe, you know, another half step after a while back. But who knows? I, I will say, do you think Madden's getting better every year? Like, even, even slightly? I do to an extent. I think just for the fact that it, it has more than it did. I mean, like, we had, like, an era of Madden where, like, not much really changed. Like, you know, the gameplay yeah. changes a little bit every year. Like, if you play the game, you know, the gameplay does change. It doesn't feel the exact same, right? But outside no. of that, I mean, there was an era where, you know, on the, like, Xbox One, PS4, yeah. like, that generation, I mean, you had years. Like, if you go back to Madden 19 right now compared to 23, I mean, it's it's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Now, people argue here or there, like, which, which gameplay they preferred better. Like, that's just kind of subjective but i mean you look at franchise mode then compared to now it has like way more stuff now the problem is i feel like it's gotten buggier over the years so like while it has like more features than it had in 19 or 18 it's also buggier so really you could kind of make the argument either way like well yeah it has like way more to offer like madden 19 franchise like had nothing it didn't have coaches or skill trees or 
And the scouting system, again, that's another thing. Like, some people prefer the old one, but whatever. It didn't have the one that they just changed. It didn't have the, the new free agency stuff. It didn't have, like, none of that. But it was, I'm pretty sure it was less buggy than it is now. So, you know, some people might say, I'd prefer it to be that way but not have bugs. So, I don't know. I, so, I think, I think the game is better in terms of it offers more than it did years ago. But I think it has gotten buggier each year as well. It's kind of like two sides of the coin. I think gameplay this year... When you compare it to the last couple of years, definitely got better. Like outside of the old line blocking, like that's the, really the main thing. And I mean, aggressive catches, but they, they've done that on purpose. So that's not like like O line isn't purposely this bad. Aggressive catches is just a decision they made, which a lot of us don't agree with. But I think gameplay like definitely got better this year. And I, a lot of people say they they're liking yeah, why, the gameplay. But. Why the why the hell are aggressive catches back? Like, is it because we got you People know Clint leading the way? And, like, they just forgot the era of, like, 15 with the face catching, 16 with the Odell stuff. They just, like, forgot how much that was awful for the game and, and people hated it. Like, what, what, what? So many people what complain is different about nowadays? it. Like, people, people complain for years that they want them back. Like, not us, not our side of the community, but the other side. Because they're like, oh, we never win one-on-ones. Which, I mean, if you play online every year, I feel like there's a decent amount of one-on-ones that are won. Because we complain about it. Like, well, he just threw it at my face and caught it. He had deep out a lead or something. Yeah. You could do that oh, last yeah. year. This year, it's way worse. But a lot of people, I think, that play, like, offline, they, they're usually complaining that they're not winning enough one-on-ones. Which is probably true. They're probably not because they might not know the way to, like, click on and get the right animation to win it. They're just throwing up a, you know, a 50-50 ball to a tall receiver and holding Y. And you're probably not winning a lot of those. And so, like, they've just – I mean, I've gotten that complaint for years on my channel. Like, oh, my tall wide receiver never wins a one-on-one. But online, we yeah, know it's, it's like, not don't, true. Yeah, here's the thing is, like, isn't that the point, first of all, of simulation mode? Like, what, what, why did they add in three different game modes if they don't fucking use them? Secondly, like, somebody in chat said, well, the only way to beat the meta man is to throw it up at a high point. Yeah, because they made the game, like, fucking morons where man is oppressive and a little overtuned. And so you have to, like, rely on the fucking dice roll to move the ball sometimes. And, like, it also, like, you will beat, like, two on one. Some stuff that you should lose wins now. And, like, there's other things that should be open against man that just aren't. Like, guys, like, literally you call an in route and the cornerback will cut before your receiver cuts on a fucking in and out it's disgusting it's like they're fucking psychic and so it's not like there are things that can like be changed and tuned but because like people say oh i gotta use this to defeat the man meta it doesn't need to be that way that's like the developers being fucking idiots okay so we have to then be like oh well but that's the only way i can do it yeah but no it's like sure but wrong it, it, we need more than one tuning change here everything is interconnected this way so yeah, the, the, I don't know. Three, hey, go on. Oh my bad. The uh the three different game styles. Yeah, I mean it, it never really felt like they truly took advantage of that. The only one that ever feels a little different is arcade, and that's mainly just because you fumble more. Um, and you can win aggressive yeah. catches more like in the older games where aggressive catches weren't as easy. But other than that, I feel like simulation and competitive. And for me, like when I film my, like certain like styles of videos that I do when I'm offline, I usually have it on sim. But when I'm, you know, obviously when I play online, it's on comp. And I don't, I don't ever notice a difference. It really just feels like the exact same. So it, it gets in the game, but it doesn't seem like they really use it, if at all. I, I don't even know what the differences are because I couldn't tell you. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, in sim modes, people have to, like, mess around with the sliders to make their CFM work well. People in chat have all said. And it's it's terrible. Like, yeah, yeah. Roboto says Darius Butler did a whole coverage thing today on Pat's show about everything he's talking about. And it's not what Madden does half the time. So... I don't know, I, like, it's, we're still, like, obviously, Madden is not close to perfect, you know, it's gonna take many more years of it, and we just gotta, like, make the game play fun and well for what we have until they can make it more, like, in-depth simulation, like, you know, different techniques are, are, are taught and done properly, but, like, sometimes you gotta make sacrifices, because it's, you know, a video game, and, like, we have this third-person omniscient view that I keep talking about, we have these, like, both on offense and defense, we're like, that's not sim. And there's some things you got to actually change around. Like, yeah, in the NFL, there is a huge skill gap to throwing up one-on-one -on -one coverage and the receiver coming down with it, right? And, like, then you got, like, Mitchell Trubisky out there continually missing it for the Steelers because he's a moron. 
And then, like, we don't have that in Madden because the quarterback's accurate because when the quarterback randomly misses the ball, we hate the fucking game. And so it doesn't play that way. So, like, that's a compromise they made because of the game. So receivers in the NFL catching a ball over a DB is 100%. Like, you know, they've worked on that for hours and hours and hours of life. They've trained their entire life to be able to jump, be able to catch, come down with it. In Madden, you ain't got to do shit. All you got to do is, is just hit Y or triangle, and it's done. There's literally no skill gap there. So it's just frustrating that, like, people defend the aggressive catch like it's supposed to be, you know, in the game. And it's not. It shouldn't be, in my opinion, for at least for online competitive. For simulation, sure, that's fine. Yeah, that's always been my argument when people would bring it up. And I get it. It's like it's just two different sides of the community. It's, you know, the offline player that's like, well, I've got the matchup. I want to take advantage of it. But off online is more competitive. And it, it's just what you said. In real life, that's, you know, that there's a lot of timing. And the ball has to be extremely accurate on a lot of those. Uh, you know, especially mm-hmm. if it's like one of those like kind of back shoulder like jump ball type deals or just like a oh, fade yeah. in the end zone. Like you got to be on point to hit that in the game. It's. It's just you press a button and then you press a button again and that's that's the extent of it. It's not and then it becomes RNG at that point a lot of times. Now it's it'd be different if someone was free forming and like placing it in a certain area and getting like even if they were getting a glitchy animation, well at least they had to practice how to do that. It wasn't just as simple as just tapping a button a couple times. And that's always been my then, argument, but again, if they're you know that that's why they should cater the game offline for sim and then online on the comp mode but it just it doesn't it always plays the same throughout and that's that's why you always have like two sides of the community butting heads because you're trying to please everybody and you're just not going to do that no 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 and uh, you can do that with the different game modes but they refuse to like make them that difference for some reason um this billion dollar company shouldn't take years to fix anything i mean that's a whole nother issue right there uh and like so and the thing is what's funny about that is you say that people should be able to practice to get it down correctly but okay say you practice it and you figure it out then you do it against an opponent and an opponent's not really like you know beating it you like but you're just more skilled than them then they also hate the game that's the that's the ironic part about madden i don't think there's a single game that i've played that hates good players on it more than madden oh, right dude. because yeah go ahead no, no, you're spot on. I was talking to someone about this the other day. I was like, Madden's one of the few. I mean, 2K is probably like in there now as well. But I'm like, Madden's one of the few games out there where the people that are actually the best at the game are viewed as actually not being good at the game. Like people are like, no, they're not actually good. They just know how to glitch. They're not really good at the game. Or it's like someone in Call of Duty that's like good. You're like, man, that dude's cracked. Like that, this dude can't miss. And Madden, if you're completing all your passes, they're like, oh, well, he's just using money, please. So he's not really good. That's just actually how it goes, but I mean, the reality of it is, even even if you could absolve the game of any type of advantage with a play or a blitz or anything, like the best players would still be the best players at the end of the day. You know, like yeah, they just put just, more time into it than yeah. anything else. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of it's repetitions. Like I notice, I know all the same stuff that a pro player knows, but I'm not going to execute it like they do because I don't put the time in. And also, at just a certain point. They might just be better at executing it than you are. Some people are just good at being more disciplined and not messing up and making the wrong read or knowing when to make that one slight adjustment. And that's the difference. It's not. It's not about the plays themselves. You know, it's it's all the little stuff. Uh, Yeah, and I mean the the plays do matter, of course. And like I I just want to branch onto like playbooks and stuff and and how embarrassing it's been for years with playbooks, like like. You know Madden and the people at EA more than just about anybody else in the community. What the heck is going on with the playbooks? Man, you know what's crazy? I was talking to uh, Lights about this like a few weeks ago. And it's weird because the, the, the playbook guy is actually like super brilliant. Like he's a super brilliant football mind. Like he used to be my favorite person to talk to when I'd go to EA. Like I'd talk to him for hours because he would just break down stuff and, and make it like so much more understandable. And then, like, also he, show you, like, like what that one, like, to, how he's... Is he, like, that one smart guy in class that's lazy as fuck, though? He's, like, everybody's I don't like, know. oh, my God, this guy's so smart. And then, like, I don't dude's, know. like, failing in fucking school because he doesn't do anything? Do we got, like, a situation like that going on? I truly don't know because th- that's what we were talking about. We were, like, the playbooks suck, and they just seem like they're getting worse and less creative. But we both know how how smart this guy is from a football standpoint. And what he was telling me was, he's like, I don't know. He's like, maybe he's just like, maybe he's just, 
I forgot what the word. He wasn't lazy, but he was like, maybe he's just he's just not that into Madden. He's like, I don't think he's that into Madden. Maybe like even though he's like really <laughs> smart, even though he's really smart and he loves football. Because the thing is, when you notice the stuff he puts in the game a lot, a lot of the new stuff, he's like very big on wanting to put plays in the game that are like this was exactly run in real life. Like, you know, like the jet chip wasp, like stuff like that. But if you play Madden, you know that that's useless. Like that's not the, if you, if you know how your game plays, you know, this play is never really going to be usable. So like, it's cool to be like, look, we put this real play in the game that the chiefs won the super bowl with. But if you know Madden, you know that that's useless to us. So like, what are we doing here? And I think that's a big part of it. It's like, let's put these plays in the game that look cool. Cause we could show you that it was run in real life. But a lot of times, you know, they put new stuff in the game and we're like, well, this formation's got three plays. What are we really going to do with this formation? It's got an option, an inside zone, and like an RPO. Like, what are we going to do with this formation? It, it's useless. Yeah. And like, that's what yeah. it is. I think, I don't think he, he just probably doesn't play the game. He just designs playbooks but doesn't play the game. Now, also, I don't know if he's being held back by anything. That I don't know. But... I know that he himself is very brilliant when it comes to football, but outside of that, like it doesn't translate to what's happening with the playbooks at all. So like there's something, God, there's damn. a disconnect somewhere. Yeah. I I like, yeah. They got to They got to ditch that dude. I don't care how smart you are, how well respected you are. If your project is shit, I, we got We got to We got to kick your ass out the door. Spartan style. Like just down the fucking well, even like what the fuck? Like it's so embarrassing. Get like an average, fucking madden player and they would make way better playbooks than this and if like you know they got like live playbooks but like what the fuck are live playbooks they're not in mud like do they change live playbooks or is that just like a feature of three years ago that they kind of forgot to keep iterating on like and then like uh, they said they were gonna like make live playbooks so, like bigger and then get rid of the old playbooks that never happened so now live playbooks is just kind of like like the, the the bastard stepchild of the regular playbooks and it, it's just like it's overall like frustrating. Like they like obviously, obviously, almost nobody there plays Madden. You can tell it because they would have fired that guy years ago. Like he, his ass would have either been reassigned or sent to the fucking curb because, like, what does he just watch fucking football film all day and collect a paycheck? Like I don't give a fuck how how well you know football if it's literally not translated to the game you're supposed to work on. And that's an, another thing, too, because I saw somebody, like, bring up NCAA in the chat. That's that's probably another reason the playbooks were even worse this year is I would assume he's definitely been moved over to NCAA. Now, whether that's a good thing or I not. I hope not. I, you know, oh, my God. Please, but, no. Please, but no. That's what, because I know that I'm pretty sure a good bit of the Madden team is on NCAA at this point. Because yeah. that's, that, that's, like, the big – that's kind of the big thing now. Like, Madden is, it was always – I'm pretty sure I always sold more than NCAA, but NCAA has been gone for 10 years. So like this return is such a big thing that I think they've moved a, quite a few people over to NCAA. And I'm, I'm pretty sure the playbook guy is one of the main guys, which like I said, like playbooks are one of the most important parts of NCAA. So if that does not come through strong, that's going to be like really bad for the game. But I would assume that he's working on that because he's the main playbook guy. And really, yeah, I mean, so that, that could also be another reason why this year got even, like, this year there was a lot more copy-paste playbooks with 23, if you notice, like teams that had the exact same playbooks. We saw that a lot more this year. I think that maybe could be a reason why, but even still, that doesn't excuse the previous couple, you know, two, three years where they just didn't really add anything of substance to the game. Like, very there was very few formations they added over the last few years that had substance. Like, 4-3, even 6-1, like, okay, yeah, that, you know, that became usable and popular. Two, four, five odd. Like they had some good stuff that was added, but for the amount of time that passed, and for how big they talk about playbooks every year, and the live playbooks are going to be unlimited, and we can do so much with them, it just hasn't really come to fruition. Yeah, like where's my dime flat? Where's my nickel psycho? Where's my NASCAR? Where's all the shit of old time too? Uh, but here, the thing is, like, I know like NFL teams aren't running like split back forms anymore, like the old Maddens, like they used to. But like that, that's not something you needed to get rid of the out of the game and stuff. But I think, like, what I was hoping for NCAA is, like, you know how, like, the all the old ideas are in Madden? Like, the people that, you know, either are, like, turning over staff every year. And then, but you also have those people, like, in, in corporate America, good people usually get new jobs and keep moving up and stuff. And But, like, the people that stay at a, a, a place for a long time are either, like, you know, super loyal or they're just no, play, no other places will, will hire them. So, like, in Madden, 
I feel like you have that built in, like those stiff ideas about how Madden should be. And there's like very little innovation. It feels like from time to time, the playbooks are stagnant. Cause like, it's just the same dude. They've got their like little kingdom. You know, you ever, I don't know if you ever done like Kingmaker, like, a, well, like a king, like a kingdom builders or whatever they call them at, in corporate America. And they're just like, they're just they're fundamental. So if you try to suggest change, try to suggest something different, they're like, well, that's not gonna work for this reason. That's not gonna work for this reason. They're just like fucking boner kills. They're the worst thing ever. So like, I'm hoping with NCAA, they get a lot of like the fresh, maybe like younger people that have like newer ideas about how to make a good football game, put them into leadership positions over at NCAA and get more of like that uh, uh, input and, and changing and, and ability to make a game like, you know, with new thoughts and uh, processes, maybe. I, that's my hope. I hope they didn't just take over, like, the old, like, pieces of shit. I, like, the lazy ones that have their, their kingdoms at EA. Um, and they, I hope they just left them on Madden to keep doing what they're doing long term. And then, like, NCAA gets, like, the big uh, the big upgrade. And I hope they don't mess that up. Is is the Peterman principle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I think, that's my hope. I think a good amount of the people working on NCAA are, like, people that were working on Madden. And I think... yeah. Because, you know, you always bring up NBA Live guy. And I think I think a, a good amount of the people that came from NBA Live are some of those people who, or who work on current Madden. So, like, uh, you've seen, like, certain things, like, shift over the last few years, like certain ideas. I think there's been some good ideas introduced over the last few years, but there's also been bad ones, too. And that's just kind of what happens. But NCAA is going to go one of two ways. It's either going to be a Madden reskin or it's going to actually be, like, fresh. And I do think the one advantage NCAA has is it's not the NFL. And I think... You know, outside of the whole, like, getting, you know, the rights for players and, like, all that kind of, like, sticky situation type stuff. Outside of that, I feel like the game as a whole is going to have more freedom than what, like, a Madden has. But it's just the the big thing with that is dealing with the players because that's still something that's not, like, completely, you know, easy to deal with yet because it's still new. But other than that, and I think that's, like, the thing that's the least important because you could still have generic players and the game could still be really good, you know. So... There, yeah, there's work I, like, to that. I really hope, and I'm not sure they will, I really hope they have a, a file share at NCAA. Like, nothing will matter. Like, player rights literally don't matter as long as you got a file share. I don't think they're going to allow it, though, just because I of know. legal reasons. Like, know, that's I really the it. only reason why. I um, hate it. Yeah. I Like, because file share will, would turn those old NCAAs, and I know you had to get like you know yeah they're like buy memory cards off like eBay or whatever sometimes for those old ones, but that's way back in the day. But like that, that would be like by far the best thing. Like you, like you could just you know get a few players like the superstars, but like yeah the file shares are everything, especially in Madden for like draft classes and stuff. It's so cool downloading like completely made draft classes and maybe. You know, EA will have, like, NCAA draft classes in Madden, like, to, like, updated, like, you know, top draft picks and stuff if they got the NCAA rights because they could sign up for both NCAA and Madden. Hell, we could have, like, a college promo at Mutt if they got the players' rights, too. So, like, they could do a lot of things and, like, because you know how, like, you know, multiple EA games are connected, like, mobile and, and regular Madden. Ultimate Team is connected with, like, Legends and stuff. They could do so many innovative things and, like, franchise could be... You could either, like in four years you could have freshmen on like your your college team moving over to your your franchise because that's just the way Madden sets up their um, franchise from then on forward. So I don't know. It's 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 interesting sure they're what do they'll do. Things. I think it's gonna be less than we hope for. I'll just say that. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point like, that's just kind of what we've just come to like expect from EA. Like like oh, we want to like think of all these big things, but like how often are we getting everything that we really one, you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't really happen with EA. So, no, no. And it's the first year back with NCAA, so like it's not gonna be NCAA 14. I don't think so, at least because I've been working on it for three years though, which I think by the time it drops it'll be three years. So I, I think that's still a good amount of time. And if it yeah. it is from everything we've heard, it's being built off the base of Madden, right? It's gonna be on Frostbite, yeah. like it's it's all that just like it was back in the day. It's gonna be built off of Madden. So the gameplay, if you don't like Madden's gameplay, you might not like NCAA's gameplay, but that's one area where they're not like having to ground up everything. So that's why I would hope with three years, you should be able to build out some game modes that are going to be pretty fun and playbooks that should be pretty good. But I mean, it's just, you can't. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, you can't. Uh, hold your somebody, breath. somebody in chat said that 2K has got the best. Wait, where was it? 2K's got the best 
player animation mutt is lazy but don't we hate animations like wasn't that the thing for years that everybody hated animations in our our game like 2k always i didn't like the gameplay because it felt like i trigger this animation i trigger this animation then i trigger this animation now i trigger another animation to shoot the ball and now good luck stopping me like it, it felt like there was no like control on the left joystick as much as the right joystick to like fake people out and people like playing like off ball defense and stuff last year i saw was terrible but i don't know like what do you think about the animations between 2k and, and mutt i mean they they suffer from like some of the same problems you know like in 2k there's always certain animations that are just unstoppable pretty sure right now i haven't been like too tapped in because i've been busy but i've been seeing people on twitter what have you been doing you've been so busy what just, you doing? well i was just i was just on vacation this last weekend i went uh I went Were to you? Vegas with, with vic I was in Vegas. Oh, with I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, I'm just uh, I got like a few channels now that I'm trying to like constantly like keep updated. I'm trying my best, and one of them's a 2K channel. Like funny enough, I'm trying to like see what <laughs> see what I can do over there. Just trying it out, trying new things. But I've been seeing people post on like Twitter about 2K this year. Like I think it's like a post hook that's like damn near unblockable, unstoppable. It's like easy to like green. Like there's always like every year in 2K there's like gonna be certain shot animations that are like overpowered certain dribble animations like speed there was you know a lot of speed boosting in some of the like previous games i think they've cut down on it a little bit there's all like both games have their animation issues now i think with 2k there's just it's with it being a lot less moving parts you know you, you may you might it, it's definitely a smoother game for sure but there's also less moving parts there's less people interacting i mean i wouldn't say that their animations are like they are better than Madden, but they still both. Even with that being said, they both suffer the same problems, with you know feeling like you have lack of control a lot of times, or just certain animations that are overpowered. Like that's just going to exist in a sports game, you know. But with that said, like could EA still do their animations better? Of course they could. Yeah, yeah, I, I it is what it is. I mean, I think you know frustrating animations are just going to be a part of sports games for a little bit and. Maybe that's, it felt more, you know, it felt a little less in my hands, a little less, like, I miss old, like, I, I remember, the, like, the old basketball games, I used to buy a, a few of those back in the days, but it was, you know, maybe if I played them again now, I'd hate them, but, like, it felt like I was very much more in my grasp, and it wasn't just, like, you know, triggering certain, like, pre-made movesets to get places, and, like, I, I, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it well enough. But it felt more like you were like left stick in control versus maybe right stick. Uh, but that's just kind of like how the game is over there. And it feels like Madden was in like 16 where you just trigger an animation and then like that would be your job for that play. And so like they took out a lot of those animations. I don't know, some people like it, some people hate it. I'm not sure. But it's always, it's always tough to balance, right? Between, you know, make it because like animations make the game look good, right? It looks better but it feels worse. So it's like, it's a hard balance between those things. Um, yeah, I think so, the more advanced the games uh, have gotten, like that's the, that, that, that's where the problems have come. Like funny enough, the more advanced it's got, like cause when you go back to the old games, they were a lot simpler. There weren't as many animations. You did have more control. But it's like, you technically do have like so many more animations now, different things that can happen in the game versus what could happen back in the day, but yet we all seem to like how the older games played better. So I don't know. It just seems like the more advanced things have gotten, the more it's opened also up to problems or us maybe not liking the way the games play as much. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like it's it. I don't know. Uh, abilities ruined Madden? Do you think abilities are bad for the game? I mean, I've always liked abilities, and the same way, and 2K does them a little differently, but I've always liked, like, badges and stuff in 2K and the takeover, because I think at the end of the day, like, it's still a video game, and you got to find a way to gamify things, and that's that's what abilities is. It's, it's a way of gamifying a player taking over or just being really good at something, and obviously they have ratings, and I don't disagree that, like, certain things that abilities do, ratings should just be able to do. But I get why abilities and X factors are there. It's it's their way of trying to gamify special players. The same way 2K has badges to gamify guys that can hit longer threes or always nail a corner three or you know be a better defender in in, in the uh, paint. You know it's you still have to gamify things with a video game. So I I don't hate them. There's certain ones that I don't like like conductor like or like you know the hot route ones like why isn't that just a normal thing that anybody can do like there's yeah. obviously 
there's obviously like certain situations where this shouldn't be needed. This should just be a thing. But there's other areas where I'm like, okay, the, the, you know, these abilities make sense, and I don't, I don't have a problem with them. I think they've made, I feel like they've made the game more fun, but I think they used to be better. I feel like they've kind of nerfed a lot of them over the years now to where a lot of them don't really even do much. So, then the ones yeah, they've the definitely ones come back uses. in line. What's that? I said, yeah, and the, the few that do work really well, those are just the ones that everybody uses, but yeah. <laughs> Remember 20? Yeah, they still got some... Like, almost every ability was cracked in 20. Like, they were all good, pretty much. Yeah, I, I, I personally loved Indoor Baller in 20. Uh, but, <laughs> I, yeah, I, remember, like, pre-nerf Enforcer was insane. There was the stiff arm glitch that was wild as fuck. There was, Nasty yeah. Streak. Nasty Streak was broken as hell, yeah. I almost forgot about that one. Plus the X-Packs that came activated sometimes. Um, what does Rayweather hate, ETPS? What, what is something you hate, Rayweather? What about Madden or just in general? Uh, let's do first Madden, then in general. Um, what do I hate about Madden? I hate face of the franchise. Sure, nailed it. I yeah, hate I the lack of it. customization a lot, just throughout the entire game. Like both mud and like I don't really play franchise like that, but like the lack of customization in it is terrible. But also even in mud, like there could be more. You know, it's like MLB The Show has like more things you customize a stadium and uniforms. Like I think lack of customization is. If I could just pick one thing I really hate that affects everybody, I think, that plays the game for the most part, like, that would be it. And, fa like I said, face of franchise is just awful. I think, and I know you talk about this, you're like, man, like, screw career mode, but I feel like every sports game should have a good career mode. Like, a lot of people enjoy career modes. Madden just does it bad. They used to do it better. I think that's yeah, still well, something the they need to like, do better. I liked old career modes, but it's these career modes on a fucking rail... That, like, they tell their own story, and the story fucking sucks versus putting us in charge of the story ourselves to build it out in our mind and then, like, you know, uh, uh, have, like, different, like, you know, options for what happened to you and, like, you know, the news stories and, like, analyst stuff. Like, it's different. It, it, it's 100%. It, it, it's, it's hard to, like, I don't know, like, articulate what I mean and how I mean the differences, but that's what I'm trying to say is why I hate Face the Franchise because... They, it's like a movie, but the movie fucking sucks. And I don't want to watch a shitty movie. If I want a franchise mode, I want to do it and like kind of like do my own thing. And then my actions have more consequences. Whereas in face of franchise, your actions didn't really have a lot of consequences, right? Right. Well, like even even in 2K though, like they have a, obviously like the best career mode in sports. But they also have like the pre-made story that you kind of have to follow to some extent as well. That a lot of people usually say sucks. But even with the story sucking, like, the mode itself is still really good. But even if the story sucks in Madden, that doesn't mean the mode has to be bad. But, like, both things are true in Madden. The story sucks and the mode's bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm trying to say is get rid of it. Because, like, the amount of resources they put into it is absurd. Versus, like, like the rest of the modes feel like they're, like, you know fighting versus each other like there's like the, the king on the castle is the the fucking face of the franchise getting all this fucking effort into it every year to get fucking actors motion caps fucking story writing like everything put in the game uh like it, it just it, it seems you know terrible and and that's why i want it gone because i want that stuff into gameplay into into the regular franchise into mutt um the stuff that we care about yeah, no, I get that point of it. Like, it, it's been bad for so long that it's just like, you know, the rest of the game could benefit so much from those resources that, that this mode is not benefiting from at all, but yet it's getting a lot of them. Yeah, and it's like, when I talk to people at EA, and they're like, well, people, a lot of people play it, and I'm like, okay, nobody actually, like, it's not selling copies. Nobody is buying this fucking game for Face of the Franchise. The reason you're getting a lot of people playing it is because it's just there. Right, so like they get this, they get this game for Christmas or something. They want to play football. They get this game, they buy it or whatever, and they see this mode and they get into it. Like, all right, it's cool. So like they're mistaking like cause and effect. People might be loading into it, playing it, but they're not actually selling copies due to it. It's not good, and so that's that's like it's 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 a weird thing to say. Yeah, people might be playing it, but it doesn't help your business. I think for I think for them like the only thing they really care about now more than anything obviously they care about money but they know like with Mutt they're gonna make the money like they don't even have to really question it that much at this point I think for them the biggest thing is just engagement so 
the more people engage with the games, so if a bunch of people are playing face of the franchise, like that's still engagement and they that's what they care about. And I think I think the thing with face of the franchise is a lot of people do play it, but from what I've always been led to believe, it's kind of one of those things where a lot of people play it during like that first month. That's not something that people are playing throughout the whole year like they are with a franchise mode or much. So it's like you get a lot of upfront engagement and you might have some people that buy the game for that. I'm sure there's people out there that do, but it's like it's like very upfront engagement and then like once you play through the story, you're probably not really revisiting it because the mode doesn't have a lot of like replayability to it. Whereas if you get the game for franchise or mutt, you're gonna be on that all year so long as it's like working decently. You're gonna be on that the entire time you're on the game, which is like a, that's a whole different level of engagement. So, like, yeah, well, that's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say is like the engagement doesn't matter because like engagement is just there to make more money. That's literally why the game company has engagement metrics because they they think the longer you play, the more you spend, which in a lot of cases is true, i.e. in, in mutt and stuff. But the, the it, it's false engagement. Okay, they're playing face of the franchise because it's there. It's not because it's a good storyline. It's not going to sell any kind. You're not going to make more money when people play a shit fucking product. Okay, like if I put out a shit fucking video and then people watch it, they're watching it there because like maybe they're fans of the channel. But are they more likely to come back to me if the product I just put out was fucking terrible? No, right? So you can get people, but you can lose their fucking trust by putting in, in shit like that. Okay? So it's, it's what I'm trying to say is like, sure, it's there, but it doesn't mean that's helping your product out long term i just don't think i just don't think they carry the way i think as long as the engagement's there they don't care like they just they just care about being able to show the numbers to whoever they got to show those numbers to and then whatever that means for them beyond that i don't know but that's the only thing they really harp on nowadays so i i don't think they care if it's like like you said false engagement or, or real as long as the numbers there that is they can show somebody to justify it because they keep dumping money into the mode so clearly i don't know at that that's one thing i feel like ea knows how to make money like clearly so there's got to be a reasoning for it is like the only thing i can ever figure but like you know people like us play it and we're like how, how does you know how does anybody return to this but yet there's people returning to it somehow and there's people i like every year when i review madden that's one of the things i say i'm like face of franchise still sucks it's still awful and there'll be people in the comments like face of the franchise is awesome and i'm just like i guess i don't i don't i don't see it you know but there's just everybody's got a different opinion if i think it sucks is and like you know for me to say something sucks like it has to really suck like i'm 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 pretty uh glass half full kind of guy so when i say it sucks i, I really think it sucks like horribly and there, yet there's still people that, that think it's good so i don't know like i don't but if they're continuing to pour money into it i feel like there has to be something in it for them why would they keep wasting money on something that's not helping them out at all yeah well my my old theory was the fact that uh um the person like you know when rex got fired right for whatever he did the person that took over his job came from face of the franchise okay and because it was his baby and because he ended up getting the next job whether he deserved it or not uh he was just like the next guy up he was, he was like you know how people get new jobs at ea and, and upgraded it's like they're just nice they don't have to show any sort of confidence. They're just kind of like nice to be around. Um, so he got it. And since it was his baby, he refused to kill it off because that's what got him the job. So he's like, oh, let's, let's keep doing that. It's kind of like how many, how, how many, how much more money would Madden make if it went free to play, right? Off mutt and stuff. Millions, millions and millions more dollars they, they'd have every year. But because EA is filled with a bunch of cowards who will only ever do something if another studio does it first. And they're, they're, they're literally like the, 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 the biggest fucking gaping wussies in gaming history. They will not make their game free to play because they lose that $60 revenue year over year. Because I've oftentimes said this thing. If you're the executive that suggests it and it goes tits up and like maybe you make a little bit, you know, maybe in that 1% chance that it doesn't make as much money the next year as it made the previous year, um, you're going to get fired. Okay. Whereas if you're if you're that same executive cashing your five million dollars a year paycheck and stock options, and if you say nothing and you change nothing, you're gonna keep getting paid, okay? So while you can look at games like Fortnite making you know hundreds of millions, billions, 
You can also look at yourself and be like, eh, just, I kind of want to keep my piece of the pie and I just want to stay shut up and not change anything. Yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, I don't even know if the NFL would allow it. That's like the other like side of the coin. But I'm not saying EA wants to do it either, but I don't, I, I, I can't see the NFL having their game free to play. I don't know if they've really? ever like, changed their outlook on it because they, that was one of the biggest reasons that they, were like mad at 2k back in the day when 2k dropped 2k5 and made it 20 dollars. they didn't like that they were like they felt like that was where like did you hear bargain. that from there's just been like a bunch of like reports on that like, i don't know if it's 100 percent true but there's been a lot of reports like different articles i've read over the years where they said like they were not happy about how they just like kind of came out of nowhere and like wound up dropping it for 20 dollars because they felt like that was like oh it's like like with their brand on it they felt like oh you're selling it like at a bargain bin price because also he said, like, you know, when they when they decided, like, all right, we want to go exclusive, it was also reported, again, I don't know how true it is, I've read it a bunch of different times, but they said that 2K offered more money than EA, but NFL still chose EA, so, and a lot of people said, well, they believed that that was because the NFL didn't like what 2K did when they dropped the game for $20, like, it rubbed them the wrong way, but again, I don't, I don't know how true it is, but if that is true, then I can't see how the NFL would be like, yeah, just make the game free to play, obviously, this is many years later, so their outlook on business could have changed. And obviously now there are a lot of free to play games that are doing, you know, there's some of the biggest games in the world. MLB so, did it on Xbox. Yeah. Oh yeah. I know. Of, That's why yeah. I play it now because they've made it free. Like I would never have played MLB the show if it wasn't free the last two years, but now I did. So it definitely works. It's going to get more people at least to try it out. So I just, I don't know. I don't know if the NFL would even allow that. I, I just, again, knowing how uptight they are, I could, I can't see them doing that. But again, now if, 2K does it first, maybe, and shows that, like, oh, But here's the is, thing. You know, EA's maybe also never it. done it. Uh, EA's never done with any of their other games, their NHL, their FIFA, their any of their other games outside of Apex, which needed right. to compete. It was basically, you know, a ripoff of uh, Fortnite that came out a little bit later. Like, uh, 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 of the games that they weren't, like, you know, forced by market competition into doing it, they haven't done it where they could have. So I'm not necessarily sure it's, it's the NFL or more so than just EA being like, you know what? Fuck them. We can charge for FIFA. We're going to charge for FIFA. We can charge for NHL. We're going to charge for NHL. Uh, same shit with, you know, what they did with their, the NBA Live before that petered out because the game fucking sucked. Uh, it was the same thing. So, I, 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 you know, maybe it's on the NFL because those, you know, specific rumors and stuff from back in the day. But it's also more than likely EA never even fucking brought it to their attention. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, like, don't get me wrong. I'm sure that EA doesn't want to do it. But I'm saying even if they did, I don't know if the NFL would even be okay with it. And, like, NBA Live was the perfect game to try something like that with because they were so far behind 2K anyway that, like, what did you have to lose? They barely sold any copies anyway. They would have just made it free. They would have definitely had more people at least curious enough to try it out. But even if you made it, I think they, I, I know at one point when they dropped the new one when they came back it was like forty dollars but even at 40 it's like people are so in like 2k is like such a big deal at this point like you ain't paying forty dollars to try live but if it was free i'm like all right let's see what lives got like and maybe maybe that could could have changed something who knows but they didn't even try and that was like the golden opportunity like you literally had nothing to lose there and they still didn't yeah. do it so you know they they could have definitely probably made at least for a moment a little dent if they just made it free they would have had some buzz if nothing else yeah, I don't. Oh, I don't totally. think they would do it with Madden or like FIFA. I think it's just, it's just everything is on. I don't know what the word is, but it's just like the the system just keeps running. You know, like they're not they're not about to throw any uh curveballs and, and nothing. They're just gonna let it keep going. It keeps pumping out money. True. Hey, uh, legitimate question. T posing in the middle of court is wait no no, no sorry that wasn't the question. But T posing in the middle of court is legitimate NBA tactic. Yeah, that was that was funny. The NBA live stuff back in the day. All those. Um, NFL should not care if it's free to play or not. NFL is paid to some money regardless. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Isn't live coming back? I think they killed live. Uh, I think live is, is dead and gone. Yeah, um, I don't VRs think live is coming back. It it's, is? I know I said I don't think it is at this point. No, nah, it, it doesn't seem like it would be. Um, hey, you said you're making NBA content. And, uh, yeah. is that because of the September blues of Madden content where it gets, it gets really low and, and sad here? For, for view numbers for Madden? No, I started this a few months ago. It was just something I want to try doing. Like, I, we'll see how long I stick with it. But I was just, like, trying to branch out and, like, do something else. But I didn't want to do it on the main channel because you know how that goes with YouTube. Yeah. kind of need to be niched down as much as possible. So, no, I started a few months ago. But, uh, but yeah, I'm starting to feel the September blues a little bit myself. Uh, 
that's just that's just this time of year though on YouTube. Usually once October comes, things will pick back up. Oh yeah. But it's still yeah, weird so that... though. It's still weird because the game's like not even. I mean, it's been out for like a month. Not even technically a month. It's it still feels weird. I know 2K just came out, but. You know, but I think that's just the yearly sports game because, like, every year, 2K creators are like, oh, the game's dead, like, after a month, too. I feel like every sport creator says that, and I think it's just because it's, they're all yearly games, and it's like, there's only so much new you're going to show somebody each year, if anything new. Like, it's not like when something big, like, Fortnite comes out of nowhere and, like, it's just popular for a long time because it's, you know, sports games, it's like, ah, the next one will be here next year. Like, even if I miss out on some of the stuff this year, it'll be right back. I think that's just part of it. Yeah, but then it picks back up, so it's not about the newness of it. It's it's September Blues because, one, competition drops between 2K and FIFA. And then, like, people go back to school, so, like, they're not in a new rhythm yet, right? Because back to school, so, like, things change up. Like, I lose I lose viewers on Twitch, obviously, because people are at school. And I you know I always have, like, holidays will generally be, like, more viewers. But, like, you know, people are at work, at school, so they can't watch the Twitch stream. YouTube, you know, it's tough. Like, all these videos you used to watch during the summer, maybe. But then, like, the summer is actually pretty bad, too, now that I think about it, because they've gone on vacation. But really, like, yeah, I, I think it's, like, it's a it's a, it's a a confluence of factors, right? Not only, like, the newness and, like, new games coming out and stuff, but, you know, people get busier. But then, yeah, once the colder months come and the, and the north is all locked indoors, unlike, you know, y'all in the south, which is out, like, partying all winter long, um, that, like, it, you, you get a lot of your viewership back, it feels like. Yeah, no, view, no, viewing habits definitely do, like, change a lot, like, right around the time that are, the game drops with back to school and stuff, so cause I'll notice a lot of times during these months, I get a lot more views after five, you know, then, but whereas you know, sometimes in the summer, you're getting them more earlier in the day, or in the weekend, a lot of times I'm getting views before noon more, and then it tails off the rest of the day, because people go out and do stuff, so it's a, it, it just depends on the, like, like I said, the viewing habits this time of year also change, so it's a lot of, like, different things that you know, contribute to the views kind of dipping around this month, but mm -hmm. I don't know. But there's, but I, 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 I never want to blame it on anything because there's, there's other people that are that are killing it right now in Madden. So I'm like, ah, there's a way around it. You know, it just depends. I feel like it always comes back to the content. So even if my views are down, who's, I'm like, it's something I'm doing more than who's that person that's killing it right now? Engle. The who? Engle. Oh, Bengals killing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven Bengals been killing it for a couple a years though. Um. Sure, I'm sure, like, you know, RBT and, and those guys are doing really well t as, as well. But even the biggest creators, I know MMG has said that multiple times before. He's like, man, the launch views suck. Like, even a he, like, he even says it in August. He's like, you know, the views are always better, like, October, November, December. So Yeah, into January. Like, the most people that have Madden is, like, Super Bowl because you get it for Christmas. Yeah. And then, like, the hype around the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Those are always the best times. But, yeah, it's just interesting. September Blues, I, I tried to, I tried to, like... I put out a tweet the other day, it's like saying like smaller creators, don't worry, you're gonna struggle here in September, but it's gonna come back. And then like, you know, some smaller creators are like, I'm still killing. It. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, well, you just started. Just just wait. Like I've been through this. Like you know, don't get too cocky. Is is what I'm trying to say. And sometimes you will get a really good view. But like Bengals mostly, he's built around like the NFL type of stuff, right? Um, and he's he does like, uh, he does them both. To be fair, um franchise well, that's that's, it's, that's it's, where it's you get the most based. viewers is stuff that relates directly to the nfl like that's yeah I mean, i've known that for years and i've tried like here and there to start different series it can relate uh you know like when i started doing like the scoring a touchdown with a player in every madden because like my my outlook on it was that well if you're not currently playing madden you could still watch that because you're uh -huh. a fan of the player you've probably played madden at some point so there's some nostalgia it's like if you're just a fan of tom brady you would watch that video whereas if I'm doing a Madden tip or talking about the update, if you're not currently playing Madden, you have literally zero reason to watch that. And I think Bengals content is part of that because he does a franchise series. If you're into the NFL, like, I guarantee you there's a lot of people that watch his videos that don't actively play Madden because you don't need to to watch them because they, they can just be interesting on their own. And that's the oh, people yeah. that tend to struggle less with views. Um, same with, like, if you're familiar with uh, 2K, King of the Fourth Quarter. Like, his content is... is kind of bingle-ish in some ways but not all he does some different like concepts but you could watch them and not play 2k and they're interesting whereas if you're not actively playing 2k you might not watch a, a my park youtuber like you, you might not be as into it so i think that's how you get around bad views yeah. or bad times is you need something that appeals to broader than just the people that are playing the game and it's it, it is hard to do not everybody can do it 
No, I think you yeah, 100% nailed it. Like, making con like for years, I thought, like, the biggest you know, market in, in YouTube was just, like, covering NFL, MLB, like, news and stuff. Be but, like, people would never do it because you always got, like, clapped by copyright and stuff. So, Bengal, you know, and I don't want to spend too much time talking about Bengal. We'll have him on the podcast, I'm sure, sometime if you ever, you know, accept. So, I'm sure he'd be, he'd be kind of come on. He was on before, but anyways... Yeah, like that's it, what you just said was exactly like perfect because you know you don't need Madden to watch a realistic Lions rebuild or an unrealistic rebuild and stuff. And like, whereas like Mutt stuff and Madden tips, you need to be playing the game, right? Like, it's just no way to relate to people. So I, I think you know what I, I, I don't have any much much to add to you right there. So we're gonna move on. So how much are you playing Mutt this year? Uh, more than the previous couple of years, I've, I've been trying to make it a point to just play the game more. And so a lot of times those are the videos I put on my second Madden channel, which is just me playing the game or just clips from gameplays. That's having the second channel there and like the goal being to try to keep it updated with at least one or two videos a week if I can kind of pushes me to keep playing more because I want to play the game. But the main channel just takes so much time. And that's why I'm currently looking for an editor, too, because it's just... It just gets to be too much when you do everything yourself. And, like, you still want to play the game and have fun, too. And the past few years, I just have not been able to do that much. But so far this year, I've been playing it a, a good amount. So I'm happy with where that's at right now. And if I could find an editor, then I could probably play it even more. Yeah, I mean, as a YouTuber, like, getting an editor is, like, the first step to successful expansion. So yeah. Why don't you, you go to, like, so why don't you go to, like, why don't you go to, why don't you go to Fiverr? No, we're not. We're not doing that. Yeah, Why not? Did you try I, before and didn't work out? I just, I, I'm, 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 I'm not even. If you, I don't know. Well, I know they, they probably actually have some decent ones there that you pay yeah. more for. Yeah, I'm sure. But I don't know. I, I want to go. What do you want to pay somebody like minimum wage? You want to like fucking whip them with your, with your, yeah. your long old like Indiana Jones style thing? You want like, no, how I, dare I you ask for more than seven fifty an hour? You son of a bitch. Oh no, dude. Like the bunny's not the issue. I, I mean, I, I, I pay for good work, but I want someone that's like familiar with madden and I, I got a couple people i'm talking to so i think it's it's gonna be fine but and, I, and I, one of <laughs> my like friends dating. i want to teach him how to edit like some of the simpler stuff so he could help out but yeah i mean it's just it gets hard to like put out like at a certain point you can only put out so much content when you're editing yourself and it and like over the years my videos have gotten a little bit better so like the better they get the more time they take to edit so yeah. it's i used to be able to pump out a lot more videos than i can now so the only way to fix that is to have someone help out. And everybody yeah, I've talked having, to have said it's the biggest, like, it's the best decision you can make. Yeah, having somebody help you out with your channel is, is absolutely huge. And, like, it, it's absolutely, yeah. I, I agree. That's the point I'm surprised you don't have. Uh, I'm talking, yeah, he's, I'm talking to a few editors right now. I was like, it was like a dating site. Like, is there a, a Tinder for, for editors? Is it the... Uh, no, it's just editor? I just know a few people that have like edited in Madden, so I've like DM'd them and talking to them because I'm I'm open to having more than one, honestly, because the more you have, the more content you could put out. So mm -hmm. Look at yeah, that NBA just... content up and going, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess we'll we'll see. Um, uh, hey, this was a random question from chat that I saw. What would you be doing for a living if it weren't for Madden? I don't even know. I mean, before I, before I was doing Madden, I was working at a paint store fixing paint and doing work for like you know customers and stuff like taking their orders and mixing paint and delivering orders sometimes uh i mean it wasn't it wasn't the worst job in the world but it wasn't my dream job and then on the side i even worked at best buy for a little bit just because i just wanted extra money and i was doing this when i started the channel i just do the channel at night uh that's back when i was just uploading tips it took like 30 minutes to make a video it was the good days but uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I'd still be working at, at the paint store. I mean, maybe they, they paid well. They had good benefits, but it wasn't like my dream job. I was always looking for something better. And then YouTube just started slowly taking over. And then so now I don't really have to think about it. But yeah, I don't I really don't know. Yeah, it is. It is crazy. The opportunities that YouTube has provided for like an entire, you know, generation or like population. And like, you know, there's all those like, I don't want to get too much into into this, but like, I wonder how much and how many people do you think are employed by YouTube and like social media in total in the United States alone? Do you think like? Oh man, hundred, somebody was talking about this the other day. There's a lot of people. Like like how many people make six figures on YouTube? It's a it's a pretty big amount of people. I don't remember the number, but is it? There's a lot of people that are making a full time living on YouTube, which is great. That's why I always 
push more people to at least try it. I don't I don't think it's as hard as make as people make it out to be. Like it's not easy, but it it I think it's something that literally anybody can accomplish if they just if they really focus on it and set the time aside. I mean, even when I went full time, I wasn't doing anything that like anybody else couldn't do. I was literally just I mean, and even now to this day, like there's there's certain things I do that I've gotten better with and I've done like more in depth videos and you know, different concepts, but the bulk of like everything I did for a long time was just tips and covering news. And literally anybody can do that. You just have to be persistent. The problem is is when you got into it, it it's still more of a newer category. If you get into tips and covering news now, it's a little harder. Yeah. yeah, It's, it's so concentrated with people. And even when I started, I felt like it was saturated as hell. Like I was even going in, like, I don't know how much of a den I'm gonna make. There was a lot of tip channels when I started and I was more now but even when I started, people would, I mean, there were people constantly saying, I don't know, YouTube's too saturated. And people say that it's now. True. But people were saying that five years ago, too. And I felt like there were a ton of tip channels when I started. And I don't know. I mean, it's just. Yeah, most of those tip channels are dead, to be fair. And 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 you, you wouldn't have, like, you transitioned into a good niche and you kind of like took off because of the way you did your videos that they weren't like if you were in tips still i you wouldn't be getting the views that you have right now because the 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 the, the it's just so saturated there's still thousands so like while you say yeah get into them it, it's a good idea and you could start off with like a video years pops you can lead into other things but you really do want to find a different niche because how many like those channels that you started with like there might be a couple left still. And um, new people come out with new tips every year. And like, it, it's survivorship bias a little bit. I got you on here because you're still doing it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have those people on. Like, and you know, I don't know. It, it's like, it's still a tough game. But like, the, the people that, it's like, it's like, you know, that old that old joke of like, whenever, when somebody's on the Tonight Show and it's like this famous actor and they're like, oh man, how'd you get here? They're like, you know, I just followed my dreams and it worked out. It's like, well, yeah, but how many dreamers that it didn't work out for? How many How many Eric Rayweather is still back at the paint store? You know I what mean, I mean? I truly Without think, your successful transition to your... Go on. Yes, I, I, I truly think, like, for Madden, for example, I think anybody could make money on it. Now, whether you're going to go full-time, no. But, like, even when I went into it, my whole, like, outlook was if I could make an extra $500 a month, like, that was a big deal. Like, like... Most people that are working, whatever job they're working, if you were like, hey, here's an extra $500 every month, like, that's a big deal. That's going to pay, like, a couple bills or allow you to put money to the side. And, like, that's how I was looking at it. Like, let me just make 500 a month. And, then, you know, it got better than that. But even if that is as good as it got for just uploading tips that took 30 minutes to an hour a day to make a, eventually make an extra 500 a month, like, clockwork. I'm like, that's, that's pretty good. Like, why wouldn't anybody do that? That's, you know, and so, yeah, you might, not everybody's probably gonna be able to go full time for sure. But I, I don't know. I, I truly think YouTube is a game of anybody can make it. If you, if you really dedicate to it, I truly think it's not like, like, Oh, if you but dedicate you- to it, you can make the NBA. No, then you got to have some kind of God given talent there. YouTube. I fully believe you can make it if you have the time and the desire to do it. Because new channels pop up every day and blow up because they yeah, know the game like, and they know what to do. But anybody can learn that. You just have to put the time in. That's the issue is you need to know what to do. You need to know what to copy. And I, like, like I've seen channels come up and people come up and people come up with like a sense of pride. Like, oh, I'm going to be do, doing something different. The people that I succeed nowadays are the fucking straight copiers. Like literally just find somebody else's content. Oh, yeah. Like you see, you see like a, like a thousand different Mr. Beast channels now. You see a thousand different like you know top FIFA creators, top creators, top like you just gotta like seriously steal, like steal from other people. It's it's a disgusting game, but that's like it's it is what it is. Like you oh, you awesome, well, go man. on. Oh no, like but that that's why they say steal like an artist. Like that's and anybody that teaches you about YouTube, like the YouTube gurus, I guess you would call them, that's what they tell you to do. Like look look at what has been successful for other people in your niche or similar niches, right? So, like, for us, that would be, like, 2K or MLB The Show or FIFA and apply it to Madden, and that works. But on the flip side, like, 
no, I, I've been thinking about this a lot the last couple of weeks. Like the copying, I feel like it, it's gotten like crazy out of control at this point, and it like it's a turnoff yeah. to an extent because I feel like everything is becoming the same. But there's a reason it's becoming the same because it works and people are doing what's working. And eventually something's going to shift and it's going to be a new thing. But, you know, it sucks because some of the stuff that I, you know, I was doing with my channel that I was like, man, I really like this idea and it's working well. A lot of people are doing it now. And now there's nothing special really about me when I do it. Now I can try to find a different lane to make it better. And the same goes for a million other people out there that have come up with way, be way better ideas. Other people can come in and, and take them and have their own personality with it and take off. And now you feel like, well, now this is getting like stale and I don't want to keep doing the same thing 15 other channels are doing. And, you know, the Mr. Beastification of YouTube is a thing where there's not a there's not a lot of personality in a lot of videos anymore because it's just about quick edits and retention. You got to have good retention because that helps the video. But at some point yeah. you have like a Ryan Trahan that comes into the picture who is the exact opposite. It's just storytelling and it's not super obnoxiously fast paced and it does have a lot of personality and that stuff is winning so like there's always ebbs and flows and like yings and yangs but yeah i do feel like the copying right now is like the worst it's ever been and i don't think that's really going to change because now youtube is such a business for so many people and new people are getting into it and seeing like okay this is what you have to do to make money well this is what i'm gonna do it works so you can't really blame yeah. them by the yeah. way that son of a bitch stole my idea which i stole from another person of trading like a penny up to whatever. I did that shit with a mutt card like five years ago, and my video flopped. So fuck that guy. <laughs> oh, but, but that's, uh, yeah, that's it was, it was the red too, paper like... clip challenge. I did the red paper clip challenge. I, I traded up like a fucking bronze card into the highest card in the game, and man, my audience fucking hated it. They're like, "You son of a bitch, you did that because you can only do that because you utilized your like you know your audience." And I'm like, I still do a bunch of trades and shit, but like they didn't give a fuck about that. I was like, damn it. I That's totally stole that from somebody else I saw a news story about, but then I got it stolen by that fucker, and now he's famous, and I'm fucking shit. That's the um, other thing, too, is, like, you gotta you gotta know what your audience wants, and that sucks. That sucks for a lot of us, I mean, because there's, there's yeah. ideas you might want to do, but the audience are, like, you know, the corner of YouTube that you found yourself in with your channel. They want to watch a certain type of thing from you, and you try to do something different, and it doesn't work. I tried to do something different yesterday, and that video is bombing horribly. And it's somewhat similar to some other stuff I did, but I guess this idea just isn't hitting. So it is what it is. See, Whereas it, 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 it could just be the September blues, dog. All of my videos in the last ten have been like, or last few have been like eight or nine. But here's out of the 10. thing: if if a title update drops tomorrow and I put out a video on that, it's gonna probably be a one or two out of ten. That's so true. that's the thing because that's dude. There's no September dude, title blues. updates. You stole from my ass too. Hey, Fuck man. you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a lot of people covered them though. Like, same thing with like tips. It was just I was like, all right, well, there's something, there's something to make a video on. I don't know why it worked so well for me. I couldn't tell you because I don't think I do anything special at all. In fact, but again, sometimes certain channels just find themselves into a certain corner of, of YouTube, and like for me, if it's news related, it's gonna it's gonna pop off instantly, and then it, it dies off because news is just time sensitive. It ain't gonna keep getting views. That's what sucks about it. But if I have like this other cool concept, it's like ah. My corner of YouTube doesn't want to watch me do that. And so if you want to get to that corner of YouTube, you got to pivot, which means you got to put out a lot of 10 out of 10s for months and slowly try to change where, you know, to a different audience. And that's risky. A lot of people ain't willing to take that risk. I'm not really willing to do that yet. So, you know, that's, that's yeah. why I do so well. I, I will summer. say, I will say though, like I used to cover the, uh, the, the patches and those videos actually did really well for me. And then you started covering them and now my videos don't do so well. So that's why I'm salty. Um, right, cause you, you, you totally, you totally shanked me in the fucking gut. But you, and that's have why something, call me Fox. you have something I wish I have. I wish I could have like a pop and stream, but anytime I've tried to stream, it's, it, it's rough, you know, like, yeah, because you got to stream more than like fucking once and expect it to the, dude, my first stream had like fucking five people in there. Okay. I know. But I think being big on Twitch is like, is a really big deal in like today's market because the more people you have in your Twitch, that's like diehard people that like really support you. Or like you can get you can get tons of views on a on a YouTube video and not have like actual great support. People just are there to watch the video and that's it. If you have a lot of people on a stream, you know you have a lot of people to support you, which is big. I well, don't feel yeah, like I have that yet. So it's also because I have certain perks. Like I got free beer coming tomorrow for everybody, and then like for the people that don't want free beer, I just have them locked down here. And then my mom pays people to say nice things about me to them. <laughs> so I have, I have I have a few different ways of getting people to the stream, but. I mean, ah, the, the yeah, feet picks hard, too. Man. Yeah, what's that? I said the den goes hard. Yeah, and it is, it is crazy. Like, it is so weird how, like, you know, my YouTube has been, like, 
my the foundation of my content creation life and it, it's what do we got 80,000 subs there as like it's just it just never grows it's so weird i don't i don't like my i i fuck up on content on youtube or something but I, it I is could get so you weird it's just like, I, I, like this year i did, i feel like i could it's just it's little tweaks you can make that would like probably pay a big difference very like little what kind subtle of tweak? thing give, give me give me a tip uh uh, mainly thumbnails and titles, honestly, and like. Damn, my thumbs and titles ain't good. I that, that's something I used to be really bad at. I've I've oh, I've thought I've improved better. them a little bit. They've gotten better, but they could. But it's like it, it's such little stuff that like you might not even notice. And I think, like like I think one thing is sometimes your titles are too long, which you, I mean that like that does affect stuff. Is for the for the new people you're trying to capture that are just scrolling quick on a phone, like you need something that's like super easy and like quick to understand. I watched, I, I, I've been looking at that and I have been trying some shorter titles, but I watched, I, I saw something like title length has no, um, there was like statistical analysis done. Title length ha has no effect on video views. I don't know, man. Some of the biggest in the world, like they, they, they're very, they're very adamant that the shorter and simpler the title is, the, the more clicks you're going to get. Cause I mean, I, I think just from a psychological level, just think of it. Like you see an interesting thumbnail. The title is just short, sweet, and to the point, and you just immediately understand exactly what this video is about. I feel like the more clarity you have when you see something instantly, the more likely you are to click it. Like, if you have even the slightest bit of confusion or, like, something gets cut off and you can't see the full thing, you're more likely to probably just scroll to the next thing because people are scrolling so quick. And... Yeah, that's great and all, but, like, the Muck community is used to reading fucking paragraphs on, like, Zerk's, Zerk's videos, and that guy fucks for views. So I'm like, it, it, some of it is absolutely the audience and what they have and like, you know, people returning and then the short stuff. And I've tried some stuff, but like, you know, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. And like thumbnail tips, I 100% need to, not to resist you too much on the, on the title tips. But uh, yeah, if, if, I don't know, we could take this offline. I don't know how much people care about. Uh, um, also, it's just, it's just video ideas. Like video ideas matter too. So obviously there's certain things you have to cover as like a mutt YouTuber and a guy that's always going to, keep people up to date on the news or the glitches or the loopholes and all that stuff. You got to cover that stuff. And there might not be like this like super extravagant way to package some of that stuff, which is fine, but it's kind of what you can do on top of that. Like you could do everything you're doing the same now, but add in a couple of other ideas in with that stuff. that could help branch you out to a larger audience. So like there's more than one way to do it. It's not saying, Oh, just change everything you're doing now, but maybe add something else to it. That would act, that would be really good for clicks and subscriptions like you probably get i don't know you'd have to look at it i because i know you do some like ebooks and, and some tips here and there but only for members now i okay. took that off because i was sick of facing my clones over and over okay because like i've noticed even on my channel like even like it's very clear that when i do tip content that stuff gets the most subs per view like how to content mm. always is very highly like stuff that so, people are going to sub if you help them with something they're more likely to sub whereas like you can cover the news and they might not subscribe because they want to know the news all the time. They'll just, you know, when the news pops up on their home page, they'll click it. But they don't necessarily need to be up to date all the time. Whereas if you, ha if someone's looking for a problem, like I need a better offense or defense, or I need some tricks to help my game, and you help them with that, they're more likely to sub because they're like, okay, this guy helped me out, and I might need more help in the future, so I want to like remember this guy. I think that's just like stuff like that will help you get more subs if you wanted to do it. But even mutt tips, you could do, you know, in that same way, like show people mutt tips, like because there's obviously like different. Yeah, ways I mean, to... I like I'm I'm by far, and you know, not to break my arm, pat myself on the back, by far the best mutt tips without a doubt, and over the last you know whatever five years, and stuff, and like it's just, it's just wild, like I, I, how it just you know it hasn't really helped, which is crazy to me. But not let's not talk about YouTube too much longer. Hey, so I, I do want to circle back to mutt though for you. What's your what's your opinion on Mutt this year? Like, is it better than the previous Mutt you played? You said you're playing it more. Um, well, I just think the games the games a little more fun to me. I don't think it's like a, a thing with Mutt being better. I like the field pass stuff if it would just work properly. I think the field pass stuff is cool. Uh, I know a lot of people are like controversial, like the weekend league things controversial, but like for me, it doesn't matter as much because I've never been like a huge weekend league guy. I've never played all 25 games. Just not my thing. So I just play yeah. a few whatever I can get in with the time that I have. So for me, it doesn't matter. I don't think Mud is any, like, better or worse. I just like the game more this year, so I'm playing it more. I do think field passes was a cool change. It's just that they need to work 
properly, and then I think that would be that'd be great. Oh yeah, I one hundred percent like Madden twenty three better than like any of the previous Maddens, which is why it's always it's always like weird. It's like yeah, there's shitty things about it, but for some reason the shitty things don't seem to sting as much. Maybe it's just right now. Maybe maybe by fucking March, I'll feel way differently. But yeah, I'm actually this is one of those Maddens. It's it's a it's it doesn't happen very often to me. Where it's a Madden that I look forward to play even offline. Like, you know, stream and stuff. I was like, alright, let's get into gameplay. I'm excited to play uh, right now and today. And, like, in the previous Maddens, sometimes I feel like I'd only be excited for, like, a new card gameplay. And, like, I would just would just avoid playing it off stream because I hated, like, 22. The, the, the fucking mobile quarterback bullshit. The low point wheels and stuff. That, like, I could just tell, like, I just fucking hated that game. And I, 21 is something I, I enjoyed. And I played it offline, too. 20, 20 was the biggest. I, I couldn't touch that fucking game with a 10 foot pole off stream. I just, the only time like I do that shit was on stream and it would just piss me off every time booting up that game because of how awful, uh, the stretch dive and the, the, the fucking meta was in Dude, 20. That's funny, so like it, 20 is like the but, game that I played the most by far, really? like the last like few years, like five or six years. Yeah. I played the hell out of 20. I 20 was, was a bad game, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's just, I, I, it was just, and I enjoyed the chaos of that game. And it was pandemic 22. Madden. I mean, you couldn't, you literally couldn't do anything else. Huh? It was pandemic Madden. You literally couldn't do anything else except play it. Yeah, but I mean, I, I still, you know, with doing YouTube or like, I played other games too. I don't just play Madden, but like, I don't know. Twenty is a game where even because I've heard other people say it too that they really enjoyed playing it, even like acknowledging how bad the meta was, they still enjoyed playing it. And that was kind of me. Whereas twenty one and twenty two, I put both of those games down very early. Just. I just huh. was not excited about him after the first, like, month or two. After realizing, like, maybe it's just because the way that we enjoy the game, and I enjoy passing more, and maybe you um, are more of, like, a, a run fetishist, and maybe that's just why it got you, and then just the meta you enjoy. Because I thought 20 was, like, the least skilled Madden I've ever played in my life. You see, the thing was, I, I feel like for... Once I realized, like, how to stop the run, and granted, there were some people that if they were, like, super good, you weren't stopping it, but for the average person I would face, once you kind of knew some of the, once, once some of the better run defenses became more known a little later in the year, I didn't, I didn't have as much problem with it because I would completely lock up people that just wanted to spam, stretch, and dive, unless it was a really good player, and then in that case, yeah, it was still annoying, and I didn't run the ball a lot, I was, uh, I mean, not that I was any better. I was like a rollout corner type guy near near close flex. <laughs> I, I enjoyed running near close flex, man. I did. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, dude. I, I enjoyed playing 20. It was chaotic, and I enjoyed it. And I, that uh. year, too, oddly enough, I played a lot of squads that year with my buddy, which is, might sound really weird. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just had fun that year. I, I truly did. In 21-22, I did not and didn't play. I got it. Hey, can you? I gotta, I gotta take a pee, and we gotta get back to that. Can you entertain the chat for a second? Yep. I'll be right back. Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a good live performer. What's up, chat? You got any questions? Madden or not? Let, 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 let's talk about some, uh, some stuff. Roll out corners, dude. Roll out corners were fun. They were fun. They were a lot of fun. Rest in peace. Shoe size eight and a half. Small shoe. Madden 20 was the worst game ever. I mean, depends on who you ask. How dare you? How dare I what? I'd all said in Bunch was the passing in Madden 20. Uh, I mean, Bunch is always going to be something, but Near Close Flex got popular late in the year, and that's what I ran. You're trapped in the den. I, I can't. I right, look, I'm not going against Gut Fox because then I'm going to get put in the den. So I'm at, y'all going to have to just chill out. Chick fil A or Popeyes? That's actually tough, man. I just had Popeyes like literally right before I jumped on here. But I have Chick fil A like at least two times a week. I'm uh, I'm copping out on that one because I'm not picking. They're, they're both S tier. Best corner in 23 Mutt? Uh, probably not anybody I have on my team. The best corner on my team is. Probably still Snead or Gilmore, but I haven't used like McAllister or some of those other like legend guys yet. How will NCAA be different from Madden? I think just offline it's going to be better. I think the mo, I mean, at least that's what I hope. I don't think the gameplay is going to be very much different, but I I'm just, I'm hoping the offline modes are going to be better. Like the career mode in NCAA should definitely be better than whatever face of the franchise is in Madden, for example. If not, then they're just completely. Missing the whole point of putting out NCAA. Mm. 
my team or mud. I've never actually played my team. When I when I do play 2K, I've never played my team, but I do want to try it out this year. So, um, I've heard it's gotten better over the years. But I've never actually played it. I'm back. What happened? I oh, was just answering some questions in the chat. Popeyes or Chick Fil A? Oh, for Tough me, one, isn't it? Oof. Um, I'm gonna go Popeyes. What about you? Aren't you from Louisiana? Aren't you? Don't you have your I own am. special chicken down there? Yeah. No. Well, that Popeyes is like a Louisiana thing. But uh, oh, isn't it? I just I, th yeah, I had Popeyes right before I got on the stream. In fact, but I think gun to my head, like I would probably go with Chick Fil A, honestly. But it, they're, I mean, they're yeah. both S tier. So. Do you like Do you like Chick Fil A nuggets? Yeah, they're cool. But I, but I'm a bigger fan of the spicy sandwich personally. Yeah, I like good. said the other day, Chick Fil A nuggets kind of fucking suck compared to their spicy chicken sandwiches. Like I always get. Oh yeah, the sandwich the definitely chat, better. The chat came from my fucking throat. I said their nuggets are worse than Wendy's nuggets, and and they were like pissed off. I was like, the nuggets fucking suck there, dude. Hey, Wendy's not, spicy like, nuggets are like really good too. So like, yeah. Don't sleep on Wendy's spicy nuggets. Those are the truth. With the ghost pepper ranch sauce, oh my god. They messed their Wait, fries. Wait, you get up. ghost pepper shit? Dude, Wendy's has, I guess it's somewhat new. I don't know. I don't go to Wendy's a whole lot, but I, I've been like three times in the last 10 days because I discovered this ghost pepper ranch sauce they have with the spicy nuggets. Phenomenal. But they ruined their french fries, man. I, I'm not happy with how they changed their french fries. What they changed? I haven't, had, I haven't had Wendy's in a while. I don't know, but they're not as good as they used to be. They, they, they changed them. Huh. Yeah, I haven't been to Wendy's in a hot minute. Ghost, like, the... So you're just like a huge fan of spice then if you're yeah. down in ghost peppers. Yeah, but it, it's not like, it's not that damn hot. Like when you when you think ghost pepper, you would think like, oh my God, this is really hot. It's not that hot. It's got a little kick, nothing crazy. But I'm from Louisiana. So, I mean, like I like spicy stuff. It's just, that's what it is. Hot sauce goes on damn near everything. Yeah, that's right. I think Frank's got that tagline. You might get sued. Uh, what up, Swain? Um, I think like... Just remind me never to challenge you to like a one chip challenge or anything like that. It's first off. I never tried. Second of all, that. what's your what's your favorite Louisiana based meal? Wouldn't it be like I'm thinking like, don't you guys got like a, what do you call it? Po boys? You guys got like your 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 boils? What is it, crawfish? Is that it? Yeah, well, is that crawfish Louisiana? is crawfish is always top tier. Like from like an actual like a good crawfish boil, like someone that like really knows what they're doing, because not everybody knows what they're doing. Obviously, yeah. crawfish gumbo. gumbo always S tier as well. Again, if it if they know what they're doing, whoever made it, because you can make some really bad gumbo too. Um, yeah, those are probably two two of the bigger ones. So, what's your favorite jambalaya? Ooh, jambalaya. Oh what's yeah, your jumbo jambalaya definitely up there as well. I mean, crawfish is like I mean that's it's that's hard. Like, one? Most people from Louisiana are gonna ones? put crawfish number one. I feel like it's just the crawfish is just it hits different. That's fair. Red beans so why and is rice Louisiana too? so? Ooh, why is Louisiana so known for food when like your neighbors aren't? What have? What, what's up with Louisiana? Why are you guys special? Ah, uh, I don't know. I probably should know the answer to that, but I don't. I don't know. So we just make it good here. I really don't well, why, know the answer to that. That's a good question. Because it's a big port city, and like, what, like the world's flavors all came in through Louisiana. Couldn't tell you. Again, I probably should know the answer to that, but I don't. I'm not. I'm. Not, I don't know a lot about like. Surprisingly, I don't. I'm not like. I need to know more about like Louisiana history or just New Orleans history in general. You spent too much time playing Madden and not enough touching grass. Yeah, pretty much, and just too much time focused on the Saints. <laughs> Do the Saints got good good food at their games at least. Yeah, they got good jambalaya in the dome. That's usually what I get when I go to games, the uh, jambalaya, with the hot sauce, of yeah. course. But yeah, I mean, they could probably do they could probably do more, though, to be honest with you, but that's usually my go-to. All right. I'm not going to keep you on too much longer. But this podcast, I usually like to keep these things down to an hour, but we're like an hour and a half plus at this point. I just get to absorbed watching you. Um, I was going to make a comment about that rollout, you know, meta, spam, BS, and 20, but we're just going to move past that. Last question for Rayweather. How much money does EA pay you to promote their game? On a good day, it'll be like five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> ass, five boobs, personality, or feet? I guess that'll be the last one then. Always ass. 
Nice. Always. Nice. That's the Louisiana style. Well, uh, any final words? Like, I feel like we got a lot on the table, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. We'll have you back. Does that sound okay? Wait, I'm sorry. Say that one more time. My dog was. Well, I don't want to. I feel like we left a lot on the table here. There's so many uh, more I things mean... we could talk about. But I, I wanna, I wanna get you. I wanna get you going. I got I another wanna... like. I got another 15 if you want to go. I mean, but after that, yeah, I gotta finish up these videos. But I got another 15 if you got more questions. Oh, okay. Um. All right. Well, well, that was more mutt based. I don't know. What do you think? Besides for team of the week, how else do you think like the mutt team should tie in mutt content to in season stuff? I mean, first off, team of the week just has sucked for years. So I mean, they could always just start with making that better. But um, I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah, no, I don't know. Cause team of the week's like the super obvious one. I'm trying to think of another way. I'm not the most creative person in the world. If you if you haven't been able to tell, I'm not a, I'm not a good idea guy. <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's fair. Well, sometimes we'll move but, past it. Uh, how do you feel about the Queen's passing? I could care less, honestly. Couldn't care less. Is that the right way to say it? Oh, so has, yeah, it hasn't affect moved me. your tears? No. God save the queen, chat says. Ray Weather's a doer, not a not a not an idea guy, huh? I got, I'm an idea doer? guy with certain things. Like YouTube video ideas, I've got like a long list of those. But like, if you ask me to come up with something like on the spot right now, I'm very bad with stuff like that. Like, I need time to think, write stuff down. You've got what they what they like to call elevator wit. Like you ever you ever been in like an insult battle and then like you're, you're on your way you're like oh man that would have been the perfect perfect uh -huh. insult for that guy. Yeah, yeah no I'm not good like I'm not I can't improv I'm not and we have a roast session like you're gonna win because I'm just not I'm not good on my feet when it comes to like <laughs> having something to snap back with I I gotta think that's why I like Twitter you can snap back on Twitter you can wait and think of what you want to say then you can snap back I can't do it in real time. <laughs> So I like texting and not fingers? talking on the phone because I'm like, okay, yeah. I got time to think of the response. Yeah, I'm I'm 100% that person. Yeah, I've I've often found and, and and you'll see maybe I'm pulling back the curtain. If if, if ever if I can't come up with anything, I just yell really loud. I just I just Bleh! and I, I just move on. I've seen it. This game fucking sucks. That's also that's a classic. That's a classic Fox. I mean, you're pulling. Back. Yeah, you just expose the man behind the curtain. That's all I know. <laughs> Uh, but it works. It does. Totally. Hey, would, would if 2K made a football game, would it kill Madden? I don't know. I I, I truly don't know the answer to that. Like, it's weird because if you ask people in the 2K community, they say they say the same stuff about 2K that we say about Madden. However, from the outside looking in, because I do play it, but I don't play it near to the extent that I do Madden. So more from the outside looking in, like it it would object. It seems objectively like 2K is a better game with more to offer. But their community always shits on it. So it's like, but I think if they came back to Madden or like to football, right? Like you would have the the outlook would probably be different just because we haven't had them in a while. Uh, I don't know if they would destroy Madden. I don't. I don't think it would be like an NBA Live situation. I think it would be how it was back in the day. It'd probably be a split marketplace for a while, and eventually one game wins over. I think. But I don't know. Yeah, like it, it's it's truly like, like because they're not the same 2K that even even though I, I will say like I yeah. think 2K is objectively better than Madden, but they're also not the same that they were when they made 2K5. Just like Madden's not the same as when they made Madden 05. Like they're not they don't they don't not they're not the same company anymore. So like to just say they would come back and just do everything right and crush it, like I don't know if that's naive to think that. Like we I don't know until they do it. Yeah, it, it's a good point. I mean, like, dude, 2K was clearly the inferior product, and that's why they had to cut the prices of their game back in the day. And, and like, people that deny that are, like, living in a fantasy world, um, or else 2K would have never cut the price. Like, can you imagine 2K, like, you know, voluntarily cutting their prices because they were winning? Like, they, it was it was kind of like an NBA, NBA Live situation with 2K and the football market back in the day. Um, but, and, like, Madden was clearly the superior, you know, juggernaut over the, over the two. But I think like just having the competition would be kind of cool. Oh yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, and, and like yeah, I don't know why the community hates the game. Maybe we like it more because we don't play it a lot. And and like if you play a game casually, you'll generally like it more because you won't see as many of the like the flaws as much as somebody who plays it more. That's serious. true. I do because people in the two K community be like, two K needs to be more like EA is with Madden, and I'm like, 
you clearly don't play Madden if you're saying that. Like, <laughs> nobody needs to be more like EA. Like, so, but yeah. it, that's just what, what it is. You know, MLB The Show, right? Like, to me, someone that plays it casually, I'm like, damn, MLB The Show is kind of dope. But I watched the rest of y'all that, like, really played, and y'all just shit on them. Like, like, this game is awful. They're not making changes. They're not listening. And it's just, it's different being in the community and playing a game daily versus, like, casually jumping in and out or, like, maybe remembering what they did years ago. Like, it's two different realities, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to play, you know, MLB for a while and be good at it. Like, because if you're awful at it and you, like, you know, have an off PCI at your home run, you, like, totally deserved it. But if you're good at it and you're squaring shit up and you're playing the game really well but you're not getting rewarded and your opponent's bullshitting you, it's it's awful. It's terrible. So, yeah, it's it's along the same lines. Like, the more you understand something, the more you hate it, right? It's, you know, I... So, it's like... I don't in, know. In I don't know. That should be like a phenomenon. It should be called something. Gunsky it's, knows. It's like in Madden when you, like, ag catch somebody. Like, if you're more of a casual, you're like... You don't... You probably wouldn't see that as a problem versus us where, like, this is awful. This is horrible for the game. I don't yeah. like that. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. What was your favorite Halloween costume as a kid? Um, dude, when I was like a kid, I was literally like a Power Ranger like every year, like a few years, and then after that, I like outgrew Halloween and didn't like really dress up no more. Hey, I don't and then know. You what started else wearing I skank clothing. Oh, uh, adult Halloween is who can who can wear the skimpiest clothing, right? In Louisiana. Nah, I mean, I thought I thought it was everywhere, really. Once I got older, I would just, like, get random masks and put that on. And, like, that was, I just call it a day. Like, I, I was kind of like a, I was like a lazy Halloween person. I was Chucky. Oh, yeah, I was Chucky a few years ago. Because they had, like, this Halloween party. And I was like, all right, I got to get something. And I, I found this, like, really good Chucky mask. It was, like, a really good one. So then I just bought, like, the clothes. And I did that. So that was cool. That's the only That's time solid. I really dressed up as an adult, though. Yeah, other, other, than your, other than your weekend dress-ups. Okay, you, uh, okay. Like, <laughs> keep, that, keep that in the dms <laughs> all right well, I'll, I'll chill on that hey what do you think about brett Favre? like i know it's i know it's your you know next door neighbor over there what do you, what, what's going on what do you think about him is he coming to mutt is he coming to mutt i don't know and what do you think why about is him there something i should know about i know and there like a scandal going on with him right now or something yeah he like uh there's some text messages revealed he like talked to some i don't know governor legislator i don't know who it was but uh for, he, tried, he, he told him to give like five million dollars to like his daughter's former I don't know campus or something that she's played volleyball for like to build their stadium, and apparently they it was like uh it was a pandemic money or some government money that was mis misappropriated. Mm. No, I mean he he wasn't in Mutt last year, huh? But he was the year before, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean we need. Really, we just need more QBs that uh with good throwing motions, if anything, and ones that could get fearless because the under pressure stuff is starting to get annoying. But uh, mm. he he should have a good Welfare. throwing motion at least. Gotcha. Welfare money. He was misled. But yeah, that wasn't like the only thing. Then he have like a speaking engagement fee problem too. Uh, like I don't know. It's crazy. Like Louisiana's Louisiana. You said it's getting pretty bad with crime and everything, but like it's at least it's not Mississippi, right? I don't know, man. I, I don't know really what's going on in Mississippi, but New Orleans has been really bad with crime lately, like really bad. Like I don't even really go to the city anymore. Uh, last, last time I went, went to like a Pelicans playoff game and I Ubered out there. I didn't even want to take my own car because like they just break into cars a lot out there right now. And hmm. this is bad. I don't know. The, there's not a lot of like people on the police force, like they're understaffed and it's just, I don't know. There's a lot of problems in the city. So I just, I just kind of stay out of it really. That's tough. It's tough. All right. We've asked enough shenanigans for you. But how do you feel about the fire situation? But he, he just he didn't really know. Like, we just talked about that. Chet. Chet. Play, play Mutant League franchise? I'm good. Like, what do you want on a franchise mode? Like, what would be your dream here? Like, what's the need, the killer addition they got to add to it? Like I said, I think a lot of the game comes down to customization, and they don't have, like, any of that in franchise. So, like, create a team, create a stadium. just more customization on the actual players. Stuff like that. And I, I do think I've been wanting them to bring back the little mini camp thing for a while. I thought that was, like, always one of the best parts of franchise where you could upgrade your players by doing that. And then you can also make that mode just, like, a standalone mode in the game like they used to where you could just play that if, if you just want to play that. So I think it's a good mode. Or a good like feature to have so though i think those are two things and then i think outside of that for franchise 
from the people I talk to, it's a lot more like little things that add up, like just little quality of life things that would go a long way. Might be 15 of those things that are really small, but all together would make a big difference. But I so think no customization one is the thing. one. Huh? The one big thing is what? just customization, create a team, stuff like that. Because pe- people, people want to like have their own stories and create their own teams and own stadiums. And that is really, yeah. I mean, it's 2022. The fact that you can't do that in Madden anymore just is like mind blowing. I, I, I agree. But I know a lot of that was, you know, like we talked about because of the NFL. We don't need to rehash that territory. So, Rayweather, good to talk to you. Um, good luck on the YouTube going forward and navigating this uh, next, you know, about month or so of, of September blues um, of the Madden calendar. But I, I know you're going to kill it. I know you always do. Everybody go check out the Eric Rayweather's. Uh, I, I'll link it in the description here. I'll link it in the um, channel right here. And uh, go go sub if you haven't already, which, you know, a lot of people already have. Take it easy. Appreciate you, Fox. Yeah, yeah. Right back at you, Eric. I will uh, talk to you later. Later, bro. Peace. Sir, later, bro. All right.